Greetings Commanders! Welcome to Crash Landing, the Elite Dangerous Community Show. Commander Crash here as always and joining me tonight I am very very pleased to announce that I have the lead lady behind LaveCon, Karen Fishwick. How are you doing? I'm alright, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much for joining in tonight. I know you have been crazy, crazy busy. We were just discussing this before we come on air that uh, yes, LaveCon is oh, just next week. Squeeze! <laughs> I really, I mean, I love it. I've been to every single LaveCon, and this one just looks absolutely fantastic. Some of the things that you've told me about, I can't wait. It's going to be really, really great to get there and see everyone again. So, thank you for putting all the effort in and organising that. I really do appreciate it. That's all right. I'm, I'm totally looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, going to be a good one. <laughs> It's going to be great. It's going to be brilliant. Yes, I can't wait. And hi to everyone in the chat. Great to see you all there. All the regulars. I, I see all the regular names there. Thank you for all joining early, having a chat along with me. Um, we did have a, a minor uh, disaster a few minutes ago. I thought I was going to have to delay as I had a little boy with a nosebleed. <laughs> which was, ah, just bad timing. These things happen. But uh, we're, we are live. We are here. So, yes, if you have any questions about live content, anything you want to ask about uh, what's going on at the event and all, um, within reason, uh, <laughs> then hopefully uh, Karen can help uh, uh, let you know what's going on. And I'm just I'm just really excited about it. I think it's going to be really, really cool. You've got some really good things planned, haven't you, in the, uh, in the schedule? Um, yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot going on, definitely. It's going to be a real hard choices of where to be at any one time. I'm totally working on cloning for next year so I can be everywhere. <laughs> I, I know the feeling. I mean, last year it was like I said, it was crazy. It was great to see everyone, but it was like I was just so busy. Uh, I mean, I didn't get to try the, the the Elite RPG because you know I was I was just really happy to be showing everyone all the uh, the Oculus and, and getting on there and showing showing people that and everything. That was really good fun. So I'm I'm hoping I can kind of mix around a little bit more and how and see more people this time. But uh, we are going to be busy. I mean, it's it's doors are opening uh, 9:30 on Saturday morning, aren't they next week? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, early start for everyone, but um, <laughs> but it's it's the only way to fit it all in. But nothing will start before ten, so we've we've got a little bit of time to get organised. That's the theory, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. It, it should all work. It should all work. Now I've been talking to uh, Grant Psycho K Walcott, and he's uh, been doing some great work with all the uh, the technical side of things, and he's got the uh, the streaming setup is all ready to go. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I'm afraid I, I need a technical wizard or two. So <laughs> no, he's doing well. Well, that's the great thing. You're going to have a con convention full of technically minded people. So you know, if anything goes wrong, there's going to be a dozen people just coming over and plugging this thing into the right thing and turning it off and on again, and then it'll all work. it'll all come together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I totally love the community spirit that we get, and you know, everybody's willing to help out if something God forbid did go wrong. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So it, it is fantastic, and it is lovely that way, definitely. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is, it is really fun. And like I said, my favourite thing about it, I know it was a bit of a cop out on Live Radio on Tuesday, I was asking what, what was I looking forward to the most, but I am really sincere when I say I'm just I'm looking forward to just meeting everyone and, and seeing everyone there and just uh, just being able to have a bit of a chin wag and just, you know, chat to people about stuff. I think that's the nicest thing about LaveCon is just getting together and sharing those stories and those moments and the, the passion for the things that we love about the game and uh, sci-fi in general as well because there's so much more content this year, isn't there? Yeah, we've definitely tried to expand from, of course, all the Elite Dangerous content, but on top of that, a lot of science fiction and fantasy gaming, we've got authors, we've got books, we've got everything. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it really is going to be a question of uh, choosing where to start and what to see, isn't it? It's going to be really cool, though. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, so... Oh, any questions in there? Oh, just come in from Kao's stream. I do apologise if I've cut Kao off short. Yeah, he does... Uh, he does sometimes overrun with me, which is unfortunate. We need to get a bit more co coordinated with that, I think. <laughs> Sh sharing airtime, it's no good, I know. I'm, I'm rude, Grant, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yes, Max Ursa, yes, I know that you uh, you couldn't make it this time, which is a shame. It would have been great to see you again, but this... Maybe next year, Karen? Oh, we don't want maybe, to think... Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I haven't quite got that far, I have to confess. But, you know, then I did start booking venues for this year's LaveCon, like, three days after last oh. year's LaveCon. So, you know, it's it's in the back of my mind as maybe. Oh, I can, yeah, I can well imagine. It takes some kind of coordination, doesn't it? Now, one of the things uh, I was I was hearing was we're getting the... The broadband is going to be upgraded or something, isn't it? So we're going to have plenty of oomph to do things as well, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, they're getting a contractor in to make the, make sure the broadband's as, as good as it needs to be um, so for all of our fabulous gaming requirements. So yeah, that which is brilliant. Um, so yeah, it is it is 
it's certainly going to be be good. Definitely be online. Lots of things going on. Lots of gaming, obviously, going on oh. for the LAN and what. <laughs> Um, but also, also demonstrations with sort of Oculus Rift and that kind of thing, so people get to get to play the game perhaps a different way to they normally oh, play it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I would encourage anyone who is coming along in the chat definitely uh, getting into the Oculus Rift demos. I mean, I'm going to be uh, doing quite a few of the demos over the few days, aren't I, to try and show people how to, how to use it and everything. Um, but it is it's one of those things. It adds so much to the game. It is well worth giving a try if you can get in there. Um, definitely, definitely. There we go. Oh, question from Dobbo on there. Uh, Michael Brooks will be there. Yes, I believe Michael Brooks will be there. But will David yeah. Raven be there? Uh... Well, they haven't told us he's not coming, but they <laughs> haven't told us he is coming. So I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> no, I <won't. laughs> no, no, I honestly, I, I can neither confirm nor deny. No, I, <laughs> it would be wonderful if he could. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't. His schedule, his schedule is crazy. It's crazy busy, so I don't know. Oh, oh. This, is, this is the tricky part now where someone starts being difficult in the game and I'm trying to check out the chat and make sure I haven't missed okay. anyone. Right. Um, uh, well, there's a question saying, so could Kate stream from LaveCon? Possibly is the answer. We're talking to Kate about, about what she wants to do and mm. where we'd put it in the program and what, what it's going on. So there's a pretty good chance that that, that might, might well be happening. Yeah. So... Yeah, that, that should be exciting. Yeah, excellent. I mean, you know, we have got uh, a few streams and things lined up, aren't we? We're going to be uh, streaming direct from the Lave Radio channel. So if you're not already following the Lave Radio channel, shame on you. Go and follow now. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I think um, if you can't make it this weekend, there is going to be a certain amount at, um, next weekend. Where am I? I'm losing a week already. Um, uh, you know, there is going to be quite a lot of online content, both as sort of downloadable podcasts and live streaming and... Yeah. what have you so you're not completely out of the loop although of course it'll be far better if you're actually there to play it uh, yes absolutely but we, we will be trying to bring you in remotely if you can't make it but uh, yes uh, Shenray there will there will will there be Xbox ones there to try out CQC I can't comment on CQC but I know we're probably gonna have a couple of Xbox ones at least for people to try so uh, Possibly, possibly, yeah. No, there's, there's, there's some. Shall we say there's movement in that direction? But I cannot, cannot confirm or deny that one. So yeah, bear with me on that one. I know it's terrible, isn't it? When you I, ask a question, don't get a straight answer. It's, it's almost like we're affiliated with the Frontier or something, you know. I know. I know. Well, I, I've been given an official line from Frontier that they, they would like to say. Um, now, what did they say? And of course, I can't find the email. I'm never going to quote it correctly if I don't look at what they've they've told me. Um, but essentially, there are exciting and unique things going on. So, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, I, I'm well used to that. I mean, I know exactly as it is. They, it, I think a lot of it is down to you. D you don't want to say anything uh, if there are problems and it might not happen. So it becomes one of those tricky things that you don't want to overpromise something. And then it becomes an issue, so I think I'm, I'm <laughs> I know where they're coming from there. Uh, yeah, yeah, quite. So, you know, it, but it, it is going to be exciting, and Ed Lewis and um, and Michael and you know a number of the others are going to going to be there. So that'll be great. And they're doing a, a question and answer panel, so they'll be able to, you know, answer any of your burning elite questions for themselves, or not answer it depending <laughs> on how they feel. But you can put your questions to them. Yeah, just nothing about the Thargoids or planetary landings. You, know. <laughs> you can ask. I go. just don't promise they're yeah. gonna answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I know that face well from Michael Brooks. It's just the uh, the grin, and then he says nothing. Cleve <laughs> <Fair. laughs> uh, saying I'm the multitasking lord. I wouldn't say that. I'm terrible at multitasking. I just it's just practice. <laughs> just practice. That's all it is. Oh, take it the power plant. Oh, does it? There we go. Just as I say, I'm practicing it, multitasking. I fail at it terribly. Um, Pleefe is asking for a LaveCon demolition derby. Well, hopefully, I mean, Kate is going to be there, isn't she? So uh, she is. Yeah, yeah, definitely going to be there. So maybe, maybe. I mean, that's that's right up her alley. That's that's just the sort of thing that Kate likes. So uh, yeah, maybe we can arrange that. It would be pretty cool. Absolutely. And there's certainly lots of games. If you if you're coming to the LAN, you know, it's very free form. You can play Elite, of course. Um, or you can play a different game if you've got something, bringing something that you'd like to share with other people or play against other people or show other people, then of course that's, that's totally doable. So the, the LAN area is very, very relaxed. You can, you can do as little or as much as you want to do. 
Oh, it's going to be awesome. I mean, like I said, I mean, I just love the atmosphere and the meeting people there. So uh, I, I'm just going to be wandering around the land room and just checking out all the games that people are playing when I get a chance. Uh, it'd be nice to see uh, what everyone's up to. <laughs> so nice, nice comment there from from ZR ZR Sone Conda Eskimo Kiss. Yeah, that that Conda got really close to me then. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, good question uh, from Dobbo there. Are the devs going to be there both days? I think some of them are staying over, aren't they? Um, they're not in the hotel. They're definitely going to be there on the Saturday. They haven't confirmed whether they're going to be there on the Sunday or not yet. Okay. Um, obviously, we'd love them to be there both days, but definitely Saturday because that's when their panel and Q&A session is, so they'll they'll definitely be there for that. And Mike Brooks is taking part in some of the sort of games, um, sort of some of the novels and fiction based things as well because obviously he's a author as well as a frontier person so it's all good. Excellent, excellent. And uh, was, uh, Tian90, I am using the uh, the ED tracker, that's the ed, the head tracking I'm using is the ED tracker, ED tracker. Yeah, and <laughs> they are going to be at LaveCon. <laughs> they are <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> yeah, so if you want your very own ED tracker, you can totally get that at LaveCon and meet the guys behind it and chat to them about it. So it's oh, definitely yeah. an opportunity. That's that's yeah, that's that's the great thing. I mean, last last year I, I met those guys at, uh, at LaveCon last year and uh, had a quick go on the ED tracker, and I was sold on it immediately. I was like, this this thing is awesome. You know, the tracking is as good as uh, like the Rift. You know, at the time I was I was trying to, I was like, you know, you've got. Now this new version I've got there, which was very kindly donated from a, a member of the UGC. You've got the full motion, the tracking, and there's awesome. But the best thing is I can I can hold the little pinky finger so people don't get seasick when I'm trying to read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, right, no more questions for the time being. Um, Du, 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 du. Ryan Extreme, I heard you like the uh, the Condor and love the turn rate. Yes, it is a fantastic ship, and I'm hoping that more people get chance to experience it on the the CQC update on uh, Xbox because it is awesome. It is so much fun to fly, um, and you just don't even feel like you need to get the weapons out. You can just zip around and uh, outmaneuver everyone. It's great fun. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, yep, no more questions on there. So, right, uh, so we've discussed, I mean, we've got the uh, the opening, so I'm going to be doing the, the intro from 11 till 12 on the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, so that's going to be in the main room, main event, so we're hopefully going to be streaming that if everything all goes well and we have... Uh, yeah, good yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> it's be good, so if you can't make it, you'll be able to catch me live on there. So just uh, as an FYI for everyone who is watching at the moment, there won't be a stream next Friday night because I shall be frantically packing up my PC and racing up for Saturday morning. Uh, but yes, I will be up on Saturday morning, uh, 11 till 12 UK time. Um, so you will be able to catch me then, and then Sunday as well, same time, 11 till 12, and we'll be streaming away. Um, and we've got that then as an intro to Elite Dangerous. So what I've been thinking with that, Karen, actually, um, I haven't told anyone this, because I've been making secret plans of my own. I don't think I've even told you, really, have I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a second account. So what I was thinking was starting again from scratch, and going through the whole setup and the initial phases of Elite North, because there are, you know, people out there who are still finding the game now, so uh, as, as, like you said, you've got it down in, in the schedule there is an introduction to Elite Dangerous, so I thought that is very fitting, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping we have a couple of, uh, a couple of brave members of the community that would want to pop in and, and kind of have a little chat with me, live, on, on the Sounds stream, which would be nice, yeah, I mean, the stream has always been about the community and getting, the, getting people involved from the community and telling us their stories about the game and how they got into the original uh, franchise and everything. So I'm hoping some people are going to be brave enough to just pop in, and just say hi, and you know. Hopefully. Yeah, no, it sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> I won't force anyone, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a we've got a question which is at Lavecon lady. Love it. <laughs> uh, this is, uh -huh. um, talking of planetary landings, what's the parking like at Lavecon? Um, <laughs> The parking is pretty awesome. The hotel has a big private car park, so that yeah, there's plenty of places to park, so not a problem. <laughs> so that's really, really good. And I, I feel like I must reintroduce you again. So this is this is Karen Fishwick live with me on the stream tonight, uh, the lead lady behind organising LaveCon. So. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, XLG. No, I I have not organized uh, a couple of miscreants to cover my stream this time round, but I'm sure they uh, they probably wouldn't mind covering that time slot. As soon as they get wind that uh, I'm not going to be at home, then uh, yeah, I imagine uh, 
a fiery toad and mad dog would probably jump on the chance. <laughs> but I, I've given them no prior warning this time, so uh, I, I better get right on. They, they might be in the chat. I haven't <laughs> seen them yet. So you probably didn't catch that, Karen. When, when I popped to E3 uh, a couple of weeks back, and I got fiery toad and mad dog to cover the couple, couple of uh, days I was away. And, uh, oh, brilliant, brilliant. People were comparing them to the, uh, the saying they were the elite Morgan and Wise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fabulous. Now, I see them a lot on Twitter. They're, they're often tweeting fabulous things. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are so funny. I mean, they, they, are, they are funny in their own right. You get those two together in a room and they are fantastic. They are so much fun to watch. I've seen a couple of the highlights and it was absolutely hilarious. So it's a shame. All these good things happen when I'm not around to see it. It's just not fair. Ah, oh, it's outrageous. You know, they'll be replacing you yet. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just not fair. Um, Dobbo, yes, Dobbo is correct. We can buy one Vigo or a drink this time. Yes, he, he is. <laughs> he is legal this time. <laughs> he absolutely is. Yeah, and he's definitely going to be there all weekend. So yeah, I'm excellent. sure he will be fine with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely excellent. And I should point out at this this point actually. Let's, let's, thank you for reminding me there, Dobbo. This is this is really really important to me. But James is doing a, a 24 hour live stream uh, over the, this weekend. Um, I'm going to be hosting him. I'm going to be stopping in and uh, giving him support and and uh, having a chat with him live as he as he goes through. He's going to be playing uh, quite a few games, not not all elite. I'm playing a few things, but the most important thing is his stream is uh, for cancer research, which is uh, something which I really believe in and I and I hold it close to my heart. And I don't want to get too far into it, sob stories or anything. But you know, it is it is tough to lose someone, and uh, I think it's. It's an important thing to support, so please do support One Vigor. You can catch his channel. I'll, I'll put his channel name in the chat, actually, for you guys. Um, please go over if you are watching now and subscribe, and then hopefully when he goes live over this weekend, you can catch up with him. So thank you for everyone who supports that. Yes. Yeah, I think it, it's an important charity, isn't it? And one that touches a lot of people's lives, so yeah. uh, totally worth it. Yeah, it's... Uh, like I said, it's it, it holds a, a kind of. I don't want to get too soppy, but no, no, <laughs> no, we totally understand. No. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people listening in the same position, mm -hmm. so you know yeah. we get it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, it's all good. So no, that's that's fantastic. It's really yeah. great that he's doing that. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> Shenray asking if I'm going to be on the GTA because I have some exploding to catch up with. Yes, if he, if <laughs> James is playing GTA, uh, then I will dive in and uh, and get on that a bit quick. I'm sure everyone will be uh, really really enthusiastic about me exploding and getting flattened in GTA. That's what normally happens. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get to know. <laughs> Mad Dog in the crew. Yes, Pleefer. Yes, uh, Mad Dog, uh, Kate, and Fiery Toad. I think all the uh, all the crew will be joining in as well, which is going to be great fun. <laughs> cool. Who's the disembodied female voice? Hello, I'm the disembodied <laughs> female voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Stoop X. So yeah, so uh, as you just joined on the chat, I've got uh, uh, Karen Fishwick with me tonight. She's uh, the, the leading lady behind LaveCon. She's uh, organised uh, so much for us next week at LaveCon. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. And, and why won't I wing up with John? I just don't have that multitasking ability, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just, we're just having, a, we're having a pleasant chat at the moment, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on combat and, and the, the schedule at the same time, which is, it's, it's fun multitasking. It's good practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just not that skilled. I would just crash and burn. It would end badly. <laughs> ah, that's how I got my name. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the next thing on the schedule for for Saturday, we've got the uh, two two p.m. to four p.m. We're doing a uh, live radio podcast live from the event. That's going to be good fun. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, I can't wait for this on there. So who have we got going down for that? Because uh, we're, we're we're all going to be spread out. I mean, Alan, his schedule is insane, isn't it? He's literally going to be popping in and out oh. of everything. <laughs> Him. Yeah, yeah, talking multitasking. I think Alan needs to be in about six places at once because he's running live role play games, he's got a new board game, he's running talks and writing workshops, as well as all the live radio type things. So, yeah, he's he's definitely a busy bunny at the weekend. Oh, you, you can tell him from me, I think he needs a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll probably agree with you. <laughs> It does way too much, but no, it, it's going to be really, really awesome to see all these events. I hope I can catch as much as, I, you know, it's, this is the problem. It's like, I, I love 
contributing and taking part and being a volunteer for it, but at the same time it's like, I, I want to see everything that's going on because there's so many cool things going on there. But uh, yes, hopefully uh, my wife will be chilling out in the spa as well. So. Because there is that as well, isn't there? Of course. The, uh, this, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's a fabulous venue. I, I popped there today for a like, final meeting to check we had everything. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's such a nice venue. It's got a lovely lounge, tea and coffee. And, you know, it's, as you said, got a spa and a gym and, you know, all of those kind of things. So, yeah, you can sit in the pool or the jacuzzi. Um, or you can be out playing games. Or you can do a bit of playing games, then sit in the spa. Up to you. I don't mind. Excellent. Um, <laughs> That's what oh, it is. I think I'll go, I'll go with the I'll go with the games and then and then I'll have a bit of a chill out afterwards and then right back to the games and no I must not burn out I, <laughs> I would be terrible for that I think I would just I would keep going into the wee hours of the morning if I could. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it is sort of a weekend where none of us sleep much. I think much as there's lovely rooms in this lovely hotel, how much actual sleeping will take place will, will obviously be variable from individual yeah. to individual. Yeah. I kind of felt that way at E3. It was a fantastic hotel. I, I didn't really see much of it other than walking in and just flopping on the bed at the end of the day. <laughs> hey, yeah. my good friend Abacus so, is in there. Greetings, Commander. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got another question. It says, Karen, how long did it take to organise everything? Must be a full-time uh, job almost. No, sadly, I have a full-time job. Uh, <laughs> And I volunteer for other organisations. So, yeah, strangely, it's probably taken about a year to organise it. As I said, I sort of started organising it just after LaveCon last year. Um, but it is it is very much in my free time. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and like you said, I mean, practically started organising it a year ago. So <laughs> Yeah, quite. But, I mean, I absolutely couldn't do it without the support of the team, obviously all of the Lave radio team, um, but all the wonderful volunteers that help out with, big things and little things they're running a session doing a demo doing something um you know it absolutely it's certainly not not just me there is an absolute team behind this of wonderful people doing a lot of things so you know very grateful for that <laughs> yeah no it's going to be absolutely awesome oh, so many questions have come in there um uh, <laughs> abacus is lavecon drink yes i think he's suggesting that every time we mention the word lavecon we should take a sip of our drink so i think that's that's a good one so cheers commanders i understand yeah cheers i'll do that <laughs> Got to have a drinking game. It's 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 becoming a bit of a thing now. Um, is so, I'll, I'll keep mentioning just to make sure everybody's <laughs> drinking, right? <laughs> yes. uh, Saturnine is the Crash Gang going to be there too? Um, Mrs. K is coming with me. So yes, if you'd like to miss, miss, uh, meet Mrs. K, she is going to be there with me. Um, <laughs> hobbling along, bless her. She, uh, she's had the surgery, but her knee is still terrible. So, oh, yeah, thing, so yeah. I expect she's she's probably going to be one of spending all her time in the spa. Actually, I expect. Yeah. Sounds completely reasonable. <laughs> uh, oh, Ryan Extreme. Greetings, Commander. I didn't see you come in the door there. Um, would streaming at the LAN be okay? I honestly don't know. Um, I don't um, know. It would depend whether we've got the, the internet okay. capacity to do it. They are yeah. upgrading the internet just for us, which is fantastic. And mm. obviously we'll be able to game online. Whether we can stream from there as well? I don't know. I'm, we're not going to ban it. If mm. it's possible, then yeah, sure. Mean, yeah, ho you know, hopefully we can... We can sort that. I mean, we're just going to have plenty of technical people there. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. But um, but if not, then you would just have to cope with the people that are there, all however many hundreds of them. <laughs> and uh, I, I imagine we, we can come to some, some kind of agreement. I think some way or another. I mean, if, you know, <laughs> one way or another, we can. Uh, we'll we do can what we can. For yeah, you, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, trying to catch up now. Petrisk. Yes, Lavecon is next weekend. It is. It is. Yeah, 11th and 12th of July, which is so soon. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be very exciting. You, um, if you, you can come down for a drink on the Friday night if you're in the area or if you're staying at the hotel. Um, so even if you're not staying at the hotel but are staying nearby, you can pop down for a drink in the bar on, on the Friday. Um, and then, it's, as we said a little while ago, kick off at half nine. Or oh, doors open at half nine, kick off at ten. So yeah, it's good. Yes, it's going to be great fun, great fun. Uh, T Corkin, yes, I, I'm sorry, that, that was a mini crash then. Uh, he did pop up just to say, <laughs> see if he was okay. He's all right, he's okay. Um, Dobbo, um, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of equipment in the LAM room, but if you want to bring along spare bits and pieces for redundancy, I think that would be very greatly appreciated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Technical things, all fabulous. We do have an awesome team doing the, doing the LAN, um, so they have a lot of kit, which is brilliant, but like you said, you know, you never know what's going to break. <laughs> I've got nothing but distractions and interruptions. I've got another. I've got another mini crash now. 
This is this is, this is mini <laughs> mini crash version two. Yes. <laughs> Terrible. He just he wants. See, ever since Daddy started streaming, he he desperately wanted to stream himself, but he's not really old enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm I'm loving the question. Will deodorant be on sale? I don't want to have my nose melted off. Um, I'm not sure we're selling deodorant, but um, we will definitely in the ops room have some sprays just in case. <laughs> but I'm sure everybody will be very clean and wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did notice that on the uh, on the notes for the thing actually, uh, <laughs> including the uh, no na uh, no nakedness and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you see, I, it rules. never occurred to me that these things were even necessary. <laughs> who would go to a who would go to a convention and, and get naked, or you know, not shower, or all of those things? But yeah, yeah, apparently, we have heard from other conventions that apparently this is a thing. Oh, so I've put I've put rules on the on the website, but I'm we we certainly haven't had any problem with with naked gamers yet. So <laughs> you know, I'm hoping that's not even a even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, even if there's a heat wave, it's no excuse, commanders. Don't yeah, don't, yeah, don't think no, it's. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Keep, let's keep it clean. Keep it clean. Oh, uh, any more questions in there? Um, merchandise, Abacus. You didn't get your fan shirt. Mm, will there be elite merchandise at the event? I've, I've not asked you this actually, Karen. Do you think Frontier? We'd be bringing along any bits and pieces we can buy, well, or is there? Last year they certainly gave us bits and pieces to put in the raffle. Mm -hmm. So um, you know there might well be money can't buy prizes in the raffle, which is totally for charity, which is good. Um, but yeah, not not sure whether they're specifically selling things. They haven't told us that. But as I said, I, I would buy lots of raffle tickets. It's for a good cause after all. Um, the raffle's actually for two charities. We're splitting it between um, special effect, which you might well be um, familiar with. Um, for gaming or making gaming accessible for people with disabilities um, and one that's particularly close to my heart which is um, Elos Danlos Support UK um, which is a charity that supports people with a particular connective tissue disorder um, which can be particularly difficult to live with so yeah so there are a couple of really worthwhile charities um, and we're, we're keen to support them and so yeah give generously at the um, raffle not only are you supporting good charity but you might win awesome things too Excellent, excellent. That's, that's, I love the things about that. I mean, that's that's the thing which has always just really been great about the elite community is everything. You know, we all do things for charities. We all give uh, back to to people, which is fantastic. So that's that's really good to hear. Uh, definitely, definitely. Oh, I misunderstood what Abigail said. Abigail wants specific crash themed merchandise. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid I don't have my own production line, but um, I would love to do some things like that. And I know people have uh, expressed that they would like my T-shirt. <laughs> they want the shirt off my back. Damn it. Um, yeah, maybe we could do that. Bobbleheads. See, yeah, yeah, Abacus. You, you, that is amazing. If I can get some three D printed bobbleheads of myself, I think those things would sell like hotcakes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Crash landing bobbleheads. I'll tell you what, I, I don't think I can get it sorted in time for LaveCon, but if if I can do that, yeah, yeah, if, if I can find... If you, if you are desperate for a, a LaveCon t-shirt, we do have them. You can get them via our website. Um, <laughs> so you can be branded for the event, if you wish. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, yes. Now, there should be some merchandise that people can get, though, so don't, so don't worry. Um, yeah, and we've got, I mean, we've got a number of sort of traders and, um, you know, people coming to show show off their games, sell their games, that kind of thing. So we've got um, the CCG and BoardGameSocial.com is their website. And um, basically, they have they sell lots of different types of board games and um, sort of card games and those kind of stuff. So if you're into that, there will be a trader with all of those things, amongst others. So, yeah, there's... There'll be there'll be certainly lots of things to spend your spend your pennies on should you do it. We've already mentioned that um, ED Tracker, as you said, would will be there, um, which is brilliant. Um, how else have we got? We've got quite a few other bits and pieces. Happy Otter Games are a new board stroke card game called Creature College, so they're coming along to show you what they're they're up to. Um, so yeah, we've we've got a. A few traders, as I said, selling selling some little interesting things, all sorts of things. So, yeah, definitely worth it. I'll update the list. Actually, I've just looked at our website and it's totally not up to date. So I will update the list on our website this evening. <laughs> Mind. <laughs> nice. um, 
It's, it's understandable. There's, I was going to say, so, <laughs> so much going on. It's, it's hard to keep up with it, isn't it? There's, oh, there's a very good question from Shanra there, actually, is uh, will there be uh, credit card facilities at the venue or will we have to bring cash? Um, for things, for booking tickets, I mean, ideally, book your tickets online in advance. Um, if you're buying a ticket on the day, we probably won't have um, card facilities. But I think anything from the hotel, so sort of um, stuff, food and uh, food and drinks from the bar, that kind of thing, I'm pretty sure that they take cards. So um, that would be good. So depending on what you're after, maybe. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I'm going to be bringing lots more cash this time because there were so many interesting things last year, and it was a shame because you know I didn't realise there was going to be quite so much merchandise that I could I could get last year. And, you know, especially like the the live uh, role play stuff as well. There were some fantastic pieces of uh, like uh, you know like weaponry and uh, armor and things like that. And I think Michael Brooks ended up buying that uh, that big metal mask, wasn't it? it? Was the one thing that he was <laughs> he really yeah liked. he bought a big, a big metal helmet. He's um, apparently he's got a thing about different different helmets. So yeah, it has a bit of a collection I've been told so it'll be interesting but yeah we've got more live role play this time around um, whereas last year we had as you said a trader for live role play this time we've got actual things you can join in on whether it's a political kind of you know interactive game where you you play the character in live role play rather than obviously having an avatar on a screen um, so you get to interact with other people also playing characters um, or we've got a game which um, we were talking about a little bit on Lave Radio the other day um, called Jugger which is essentially a team game um, but with weapons uh, <laughs> so it's a lot of fun <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm kind of semi dreading that at the same time. I, I want to see it, <laughs> but I don't want to get involved because. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay, may, may, maybe enough drink, and I might be able to do it. Okay, that's <laughs> we should, and then, because so we have said Lavecon a few times. So cheers, commanders. <laughs> I can see in the chat there. I'm sorry, Patrick. Um, I, I no amount of drink is gonna get me to spill the beans on anything. I'm afraid you're just 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 gonna have to wait a little bit longer. You know, <laughs> you will find out soon. <laughs> TM. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Uh, I see they're all plotting against me now. They've got these. Uh, I just noticed uh, XLG put this great link up in the chat, and they're all they all want a bobblehead of me now. <laughs> Well, there used to be one of one of the bigger supermarkets. Sometimes has like a three D printing. We can go mm. in and get a three D mini me. <laughs> Scan my head, and that would be awesome. <laughs> well, I, I, we've got to sort this out. Yes, we've got to sort this out. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Oh. And here Sounds we go. Be <laughs> being interdicted. Ah, oh, dear. This, this this is the one thing about the game. The uh, the emergent stuff that happens in there is fantastic, but it's just. It's, it's not very good when you're live on the air and you're trying to talk about things and then suddenly someone jumps out and attacks you. It's just rude. <laughs> totally fair. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's just fair. I mean, he's, he's in my territory, so uh, I, think, uh, I think it's fair game for me to fire, fire first, I think. Uh, <laughs> because there's no saying he wants me as a minion. I t took my boys to see that movie this afternoon, actually, and it is so funny. I love the minions. They're just hilarious. <laughs> I love it. So um, I can't. I can't promise. I'm, I'm not gonna get dressed up in uh, little denim dungarees. So uh, yeah. I've got yellow face paint. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you with that. So, <laughs> it sounds like one of the after errors things. Instead of uh, the buckaroo that we did uh, two years ago, it's gonna be uh, paint crash with face paints and dress me up like a minion. That, that seems completely reasonable. No, we are encouraging people to have a bit of a play with face paints and costume and that kind of thing. And in fact, we've got a green screen um, where you can have your photograph taken and then we can put it against different backdrops, maybe in space or on a, Ooh. you know, elite-esque planet or something. So if you're if you're up for doing that, then um, there's plenty of that going on with or without minion makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. I can't wait to... <laughs> Get an idea. I do like a bit of green screen. It's just great fun to play around with that. So, uh, oh, I'm gonna have to try and get Grant in on that as well. Definitely, definitely. We've got um, Oliver Face. He's a brilliant um, photographer. So he's coming along and he'll be doing the green screen photographs, but also a few sort of candid snaps around the around the convention generally. So we should have a really good uh, pictures afterwards. And he's also bringing a bit of an exhibition of photographs from live role play. Oh, awesome! So you can kind of see what what some people get up to at weekends and you know the amazing costumes that some people make. 
Oh, that should be that should be really cool. I like, can't wait to see some of those pictures coming out of that. Uh, we've got a question from Dobbo. Do you know if Sarah Jane, uh, Sarah J, I assume Sarah Jane Avery, is one of the devs coming? Um, yes, she's there. I'm not sure she's going to be on the panel, but she's definitely going to be there, possibly talking a little bit about her books as well as the things she gets up to at Elite. Um, so we're really excited about that. That would be really good. Ooh, is, and do you know, it, it was so frustrating. When, when I went there a couple of weeks ago, I kind of, I saw her across the other side of the room and I didn't get a chance to go back and say hi to her. So it's going to be great to uh, be able to have a chat with her and I'm being interdicted again and <laughs> tell her to make the AI not so rude and interdict me whilst I'm trying to praise her work. It's just I, it, the irony of it is just ridiculous. I mean. Absolutely. Very. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's going to be good, definitely. No, I think it's I think it's going to be really nice because it's quite a nice informal setting to chat to people, particularly from Frontier and that kind of stuff. Um, and in terms of sort of game developers in a wider sense, we've also got Julian Gollop from Snapshot Games coming. Who might know? Well, he's been involved in all sorts of projects, but mm. his latest one is Chaos Reborn. Oh, yeah. Um, and obviously the original Chaos. So um, he's going to be there. So, yeah, in terms of picking brains of people who have really been involved in the computer industry and have got so much experience and insider knowledge, as it were. Yeah, I think there'll certainly be lots of people. If you want to know what's going on in the world of computer games, lots of people to buy a drink for, not just Crash. <laughs> Yeah, please, please don't <laughs> buy me too many drinks. I don't want to. <laughs> oh, another interdiction. See, Sarah knew we were talking about her, and she is just uh, up the ante. It's terrible. <laughs> she loves she loves making the AI really mean. That's that's the great thing about it. <laughs> I've seen, I, I love some of her, her comments she puts out on Twitter. It's like, hmm, toying with the idea of letting my minions do this. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, you know, it gives you those little teasers. You think, oh, what's going on there? Uh, but also tweets a lot about, as I said, about, about her books and her series mm. of books, which, you know, fantasy books, which sound fantastic. I'm definitely going to have a flick through them if she brings some, so yeah. see if we can I get think, on that. I think that's the thing a, a lot of people don't appreciate is, is the guys at Frontier, they do, they, they're so creative, they're full of just great things aren't they I mean uh, Michael Brooks obviously writes books as well and you've got uh, uh, Boverflux on Twitter I follow I mean he, he was doing the radio podcast and everything he's doing that for many years I think and you know they're all such a massively creative bunch of folks you know <laughs> they're always doing stuff and creating and uh, oh, it's just crazy it's crazy so it'd be really nice just to sit down and chat with them I mean, they are human beings, I will remind that to people, so you know, if you <laughs> you don't have to just constantly badger them about what's coming up next in Elite Dangerous, you can just have a chat with them, you know? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. As I said, you know, a lot of them have got other things going on that I'm sure they'd love to share, you know. Um, Michael Brooks is very into sort of independent publishing of books and what have you so I'm sure he will chat to aspiring authors amongst you about um, the kind of things you've been up to but also talking of independent publishers we've got um, Ian Waits from Newcom Press is coming along um, he's both an author and, and sort of the um, brains as it were behind Newcom Press so that's an indie press publishing all sorts of people so that's very exciting um, and also Donna Bond who is the head of the science fiction and fantasy uh, British Science Fiction Association I always get that one wrong it's yeah <laughs> British Science Fiction Association yeah that's right um, she's coming along and um, she's the former bard of Northampton so um, that's that sounds very exciting to me she can tell us what that's all about hopefully um, so yeah it's it there should be some really good good things going on. Um, Author-wise, we've also got um, Tim Taylor, um, who does military science fiction. He's sort of a bestseller in military science fiction, so um, that sounds exciting to me. I've not read any of his books, but I, I might have to find out a bit more before next week. <laughs> See, there's so much going on. That's the crazy thing. No, so many people to talk to. I'm just going to be like, I need to be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Twice as many days, I think. That's going to be... Yeah, totally. Oh, Make no. it a week long, yeah. Yeah, why not? I don't, why I, don't, not? Why not? I don't see that as a problem. <laughs> I don't really want to go back to work anyway. Oh, we can just work through. Yeah, be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see everyone in the chat now saying, "Yes, yes, gaming with Ian." Saw so, so some of your comments up on there. The, the game knows when I'm when Crash is teasing, and it specifically invokes harder AI to chase me. Yeah, it's just. Me. Uh, Petrus, yes, uh, there will be a Frontier Developments q and I think that's 4 p.m. on the Saturday, isn't it? Four. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't run all the way through till 6, though, does it? Or is that... Um... No, it's probably only going to be um, about an hour, we reckon. So, you know, you've got a good chance to get your, get your questions in. So it should be good. But as I said, a number of them will be around all day. So 
relaxing and having a drink and chatting to people, so it'll be good. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, hopefully uh, everyone can get a question in that they want to ask. And I promise I will not ask them any more questions. It's not fair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And as I've been told by uh, by Ed Lewis, I'm just not allowed any more free stuff from Frontier. <laughs> Outrageous. Outrageous. <laughs> terrible. terrible. Um, right. Oh, Shiana's Geek. Uh, yes, I was just about to look at that on the screen, actually. Uh, yeah, I think people are doing stuff about the state of turmoil in Orissa's control systems at the moment. Um, I've seen them tick down since yesterday so people have been doing stuff I've got a couple of CC to hand in so um, I, w I will get and do that before the end of the cycle oh Ryan Extreme's got a good question there could a mini lave event happen at Scotland at all uh... <laughs> only if somebody's going to pay for me to fly up to Scotland <laughs> <laughs> that's in <impact. laughs> Well, I think you know there's there's events popping up all over the place, so uh, you absolutely, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if someone wants to arrange it for you, then yeah, that's fine. Let's no, no, me. I definitely need a holiday in Scotland. That sounds. Well, like yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, dear. Um, yes, yes, of course, Dobbo. Um, I, I forget when this is on the schedule, but there is a live dockers isn't there <laughs> there is i believe it's midnight on saturday apparently midnight. you have to have made sure you've had a few drinks before we get to midnight particularly if you're taking part in it um yes. and i believe they are looking for a few people to take small parts in it so if if you feel like you'd like to say a line or two there might be a space you never know oh <laughs> uh, yeah i uh, i found out yesterday that uh, apparently i will be making another short cameo in this episode of dockers <laughs> so i have no idea what <laughs> It's better not to know, I tell you. You'll it's, only worry. <laughs> I was going to say, it's, it's just going to be one of those things I get the script and I say, I've got to say, what? <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> I can't say that in public. Yeah. Um, oh, um, they've asked, what's Dockers? Dockers is um, uh, what they describe as a mockumentary podcast. So it is um, a little sli a slice of life in the elite dangerous world, but done in a very tongue-in-cheek manner. It's, it's, it's a great parody. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. I'll go ahead and put the link in the chat there. For anyone as I said, there's uh, was it six episodes. Is this going to be the sixth one? I believe something like that. It's uh, like that. yeah. There's been a few. There was one last year at um, at Lavecon, which was hilarious. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So stay up till midnight. It's yes. totally planned. Sleep is up. So worth it. It's going to be so <laughs> worth it, and it is going to be recorded and everything. So uh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be better. Just yeah, stay up late and uh, yeah, have a few drinks. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll all work out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Head back for some more combat, I think. Um, yes, why not? Let's head on out. Dee, 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 dee. So, yeah, Dobbo said um, Dockers uh, NSFW. Yeah, totally not suitable. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Not, not. not suitable for mature anything. Yes. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> no, it, it is great fun. It's really, really, really. Uh, you just just got to. Throw your mind into the gutter and you'll be fine. You'll just you'll, absolutely, you'll enjoy absolutely. it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I love. You know, like, all the way through uh, the the elite. You know, since the very kickstart and stuff, the community has just been so creative, coming up with all so much variety in content and stuff like that. You know, and I think it's it's really really fun to see people come up with these great ideas for various things. You know, like like Lave Radio was obviously one of the first things that came out to support the uh, the game and the community behind it and stuff, and then. Uh, you know all these other things that have popped up as well, and like dockers, and oh, it's just, it's just so fun. The community Definitely. is so creative. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. No, I think um, you know, it's fabulous to have so many talented and technical people doing such amazing things. So it'd be good. It'd be good. Oh yes, Abacus is saying there. Yeah, uh, it would be great to have some uh, German event for Elite Dangerous as well, considering there's nearly seven thousand members in the in the Elite Dangerous DE forum now. That's insane. That is, that is insane. That would be awesome. I tell you what, let's let's start a Kickstarter to like fly Karen around the world organising live cons. It sounds great. <laughs> uh, yeah, send send your yeah. I think I think yeah, that's, that's yeah, round the world trip. International <laughs> events coordinator. I think that's a, yeah, that's yeah. a that sounds like an amazing title. I should that's, totally yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, uh, Petrusk. Uh, hmm. <laughs> That's a difficult question to answer. Uh, how much of what is coming have I is been mentioned in the design decision archive and previous discussion? I, 
honestly, even if I did know everything that was coming, I couldn't give you anywhere near some kind of quantity. That's a really difficult question to, to answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yes. Brilliant. And I, I mean, I, I don't know the full story of what's I think there's only one person on this planet that knows the full story behind what's coming in Elite Dangerous, and uh, that's a certain uh, DBOBE, as people refer to him. He, he, kno <laughs> he knows what he wants to do. He knows what's coming. You know, it's uh, it's great having a conversation with him, and he just gets that smile on his face, and it's like, oh, I know I know you're thinking what I'm thinking, and he just he won't say anything. It's just his reaction is perfect. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so let's head on back to the station on there. So um, I think we've pretty much gone over everything, which is on the Saturday, the Sunday. Uh, again, we're starting off with the oh, Abracadabra at eleven. Yeah, there's an Abacadrabble competition to, and um, to win a Kindle. Oh. Um, so you can submit your entries on the Saturday or the Sunday morning. Um, and then the very best will be read out. Um, and the absolute best um, will be will win a Kindle and have it read out, which would be brilliant. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing some creativity there. Um, as you might know, a Drabble is, is 100 words. Um, no more, no less. So... Yeah, that'll be that'll be exciting. So we want some creative participation. Mm. That'd be good. Um, what else have we got going on? All sorts of things. We've got a um, on the Sunday. We've um, we've got an X-wing tournament. Um, if you're into that, it's a um, miniatures game essentially, where you um, move miniatures around, get into battles against someone else, and um, win or not, as the case may be. Um, so that's good. So yeah, there's a number of rounds of of tournaments for that um, and it's quite quite interesting to watch as well because some of the miniatures are really detailed really fun to to see how they're being used and what have you so that should be good um, what else have we going well a lot of the things are of course going on all weekend mm -hmm. but highlights of things that are specifically on the Sunday um, we've got the now that's what I call world building um, session from Drew Wager who you may know as one of the elite authors mm which is brilliant um he's looking at sort of really taking world building into the 21st century he's looking at the technology that's available to create imaginative worlds um which then can be used for a basis for games or for books or for anything else that your imagination wants to wants to take you there so it's it's putting in pictures what you've got in your mind essentially so brilliant um it'd be really interesting looking forward to that um We've got what else? Oh, well, we've got the Chaos Reborn um, or in, um, introduction to Chaos Reborn and questions and answers. So that's um, with Julian Gollop and finding out what Alan's been doing over in Bulgaria um, with him. So that's exciting. Um, and all about the the development of that game and the fiction that's going alongside it. Um, so I think that will be really good. Um, what else have we? Got also obviously the raffle. I mean, you can buy raffle tickets all weekend, but the drawing of the raffle is always a big event. Um, another I... thing that's running running all weekend, I'm very excited about, is the Artemis, which I think has been mentioned a few times on Live Radio. Mm. I think some of the team are quite excited about that. Yeah, yeah. It's a um, sort of space starship simulator, so you get to be on the bridge, as it were, of your own starship and go on a mission, and you can have have different roles. So you've got a captain and engineer and someone on weapons and all of that so there's a team of six of you and you get to you know really act out your roles in as great or little degrees of um <laughs> sincerity as you feel like of course um so yes yeah, so i think that could, that could be a lot of fun i think if you don't take it too seriously it'll be even more fun um so that'll be good and so yeah, there's there's some good things going on. Alan's right, uh, running a writing workshop, which he ran last year, which was quite popular. You might know that Alan, in his his real life, as it were, um, is a university lecturer, and one of the things he lectures on is creative writing. So he will be there giving you some hints and tips on how to write better fiction. Um, if so if you are interested, I'm sure he will be delighted to see you and work with you on that. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of things going on. It's exciting busy busy weekend isn't it like I, said, I think we need like two more days i think to get through it all now. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely um darren gray is doing something on procedural generation so if that's your your thing then um he'll be there talking all about that so 
That'll be good. I think that's kind of a niche thing. I think, I think you know, with all the technological people we have, I bet, bet a number of people will be interested in it, but I'm afraid it slightly goes over my head. <laughs> yeah, I'd see, that's the kind of stuff I would just totally geek out, and, I, it, you know, it just descended this, this conversation between me and him just going back and forth, and see, I'm, so I kind of, <laughs> as much as I want to be there and kind of partake, I, I think I better just stay out of the way, otherwise I'll just, just, no one to get anything done, it would just be me and him going back and forth talking about it all night. Yeah, so. yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll try and get some other people involved, it'll be fun. <laughs> Maybe afterwards we can just hang by the bar and yeah, just chat a bit. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so I must give a shout out. Simon Winnard is in the chat at the moment. Um, and yes, I, big up Dockers. Yes, we, uh, we'll be doing the Dockers live. Or oh, sometime 11 midnight on the Saturday, something like that. It's going to be crazy. So if you don't know Simon Winnard, uh, you, I believe you write the scripts for Dockers. So uh... He is. He's one of one of the massive brains behind, um, behind Dockers. So definite talent um along with obviously um psycho cam himself <laughs> <laughs> yes and uh, as simon was saying then there's going to be lots of uh, visual gags and things brought along to dockers so i'm kind of dreading that because i know i'm just going to crease and i'm not going to be able to say the lines <laughs> but it's going to be hilarious uh, it's half the fun it'll be fine <laughs> it's going to be great it's, it's going to take so much editing but <laughs> it'll be it'll be worth it it'll be worth totally while. totally so one more thing before we uh actually uh, i want to move on to the newsletter um uh we did get featured in massively didn't we massively op.com uh which was quite nice they mentioned uh lavecon um although i like i said at the start i do have to correct them as they uh they do say that elite dangerous is getting its own convention this year i think i think you'll find this is the third year running but uh, absolutely no. <laughs> yeah totally, totally the fans convention rather than, uh, rather than the games convention but it has it has lots of things going on definitely it'll be brilliant um but it's great. I, I, I did sort of say to to Crash before we come on. I was mildly uh, mildly entertained by the uh, the comment in the in the comments box that said it was put together by a talented group of chaps. <laughs> but, but my trousers have a bum. <laughs> I'm not a chap. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, it's nice to get a shout out either, either way. So. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's lovely that they've mentioned it. You know, obviously it gives us a bit more coverage, which is is fantastic, and it it is really nice how excited people get about it both in the elite dangerous community but outside in the gaming community and we've been along to a lot of sort of science fiction and fantasy um, conventions this year and people are really happy to hear that, that you know it is something different in terms of um you know it's got some of the traditional science fiction and fantasy things going on with the authors and those kind of things and panels and talks and all that kind of stuff but also a bit different in that it's come out of the elite dangerous community um, and I think the sort of wider science fiction and fantasy community are seeing that as a, a really exciting thing. Oh, yeah, so it's really good. I mean, that, to get that, some of that crossover as well, which is great because there's still people to this day that I bump into and they don't realise what this game is like. And, you know, they've got interest in similar areas and things like that. And then when they see the game, they're like, wow, this is really, really good, isn't it? So it's nice to kind of get that crossover and it just, it just interact with different people from different communities and share those, uh, those things that you love about uh, sci fi in general. It's great. Definitely, definitely. And it's, it's great to feel, you know, not only we're part of a, a gaming community, but part of this wider community as well. It's, it's really fantastic. Everybody's really supportive, so it's brilliant. Um, Phoenix Defire has just said, it's not Yay. my fault. I sent the email and they just assumed that blokes organised it. Sorry. <laughs> totally not your fault. I, I, I get it. It's an assumption. It yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. just tell them when they're wrong. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Uh, uh, da -da -da. we haven't missed anything else. Uh, <laughs> just checking. No. Oh, um, uh, gaming within LAN has asked how many LaveCons have there been? Um, this will be the third LaveCon. Um, the first LaveCon was kind of a bit of a a get together of the guys from Lave Radio decided that they needed to actually pass on a a hard drive that, that <laughs> full of bits that they needed for the game because they hadn't met up and they were doing every, everything. Um, Remotely. For the podcast, all just via the internet and Skype and what have you, and thought, oh, well, we should meet up. And they sort of mentioned on the forums that they were going to meet up, and then suddenly seventy odd other people turned up at the hotel as well. And they were like, oh, it's it's like a convention. We should we should do some stuff. So they had a bit of a sort of impromptu recording and some other stuff going on. Um, and then the following year, I was asked do you want to come on this site visit to see this possible place that we're going to have LaveCon? And I went, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> and then the next thing I knew, I was organising a convention. I'm, oh. like, I'm not sure where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this year oh. we've had a little bit more time to organise it because last year we only had a few months to throw it together. So this year we've had a year to organise it. So hopefully that will that will show in our level of organisation. <laughs> Don't promise. It's, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I still I still remember that two years ago, didn't that first Lavecon, and uh, I think the guys were. Uh, I saw Fozza and Chris Jarvis, I think, were like heads under the desk passing cable to you, and I burst in the door, I was like, greetings, Commander, and I was like, just those guys in the back, and I was like, okay, this is embarrassing, I'm just going to sit in the corner by myself, <laughs> but no, it was, it was great fun to meet everyone, I think, you know, putting, putting faces to the names was, uh, was brilliant. Absolutely, and I mean there will be people who perhaps haven't been to a live come for, or perhaps come outside of the Elite Dangerous community, won't know everybody, so, you know, everybody's so friendly, and you know, you can always give me a shout and I can introduce you to people or say hello, um, but every, everybody's lovely, everybody's friendly, so if you haven't been before, or you haven't met any of these wonderful people, you'll you'll meet them soon, you'll, you'll get used to it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great fun, like I said, my favourite part of it is just meeting up with everyone. So. Yeah, definitely, and I think this year particularly seeing people who perhaps haven't tried other types of games, give something new a go, try yeah. something out, it may not be for them, but you know what, it might be. And I think that's going to be really, really interesting to see, so I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it, is, it is good fun to introduce people into the game, and you know, it's, it, it's great seeing that reaction for the first time, people thinking, yeah, this is really good, this is my kind of game. And I, I did, uh, this is crazy, it's absolutely crazy, I didn't realise, but uh, one of the, uh, the mothers at my kid's school, I was chatting to her the other day, and she had no idea there was a, a new Elite game out, and she used to play it when she was a kid. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you totally have to check it out, and you know, we got talking about it there and stuff like that. But it's, you know, that's what I love about it. It's, it's the community kind of comes together as this kind of shared passion for the, for something you've got in common with people, and it's just, it's really great. It's really nice. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's that enthusiasm that ultimately, you know, because the event is run by volunteers, um, you know, and it is that passion, that enthusiasm, that community that makes it happen. Without that, we wouldn't have an event. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that's really good. Um, I did see one question flag up really quick, and I want to I want to address that actually. Um, there was a lot of rumor and speculation about something in the game um, that the graphics have been downgraded slightly. Now that has been addressed by one of the Frontier devs. They've kind of stepped in and they've said what well, the uh, the real story is behind it. As usual with these kind of things, as a certain amount of FUD that goes around, people start saying all sorts of stuff, they have no idea what the real cause is, but what the uh, what the official word is on it, they, they've done some optimizations and people have started to see in, in some situations, in some ring systems and things like that, there's uh, like reduced dust effects and reflections and things like that in a couple of places. Uh, it was something that came out of some optimizations, but I believe they are working on getting things to look perfect so it's uh, you know it ebbs and flows I mean these kind of things do happen when you're optimizing and working sometimes things get turned off uh, and I think they are they're working on putting them all back in but you know still maintain the performance so if you are seeing some reduced effects on that don't worry about it one of the other things which was a nice little tip of information as well which just came out of that was they are really uh, giving some thought to the idea of having additional options so you can go beyond the ultra graphic settings we currently have so that would be really good fun for those, those people that have got ridiculous PCs and want to turn all the effects on. Uh, any more questions on there? No. So I think uh, we'd better go on to the, uh, to the newsletter. We've had so much fun stuff to say about Lavecon actually. Uh, we haven't gone over the newsletter yet. So uh, I think top story on the, the newsletter this week is uh, big up to the community site, which is uh, still in beta at the moment. There's still enhancements and things going on on it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the link in the chat for everyone on there. So that community.elite dangerous. If you haven't already checked it out, please do check it out. A lot more of the game specific content is going directly to that now rather than disappearing to the depths of the forum, which can be difficult for a lot of people to find. Um, so if you do want just a quick view of what's coming up in the game, what's important, what's happening. Uh, you get all the dev updates, uh, all the all the interesting bits and pieces that are coming up of events and things like that. That is the place to go. That is the site you want to go to, um, more so than the forum at the moment. A lot of the forum links we are now redirecting to that website, so definitely check that one out. Uh, Joe Crichton, the other voice tonight. I, I, I'm very pleased to have Karen Fishwick on, on the uh, feed. <laughs> and uh, if, in case you didn't know, she is uh, the organizer behind that LaveCon 2015. <laughs> it's got it. 
Ah, see, I'm, I'm really excited about it now. I mean, I know, I know, I'm, I'm excited about everything. I know, I know, I've got a reputation. Bless but... you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's gonna be great fun. It's gonna be great. It is. It's gonna be so much fun. So I'm really looking forward to, and to, you know, seeing lots more people. It's gonna be fantastic. So we've got a lot of people coming, which is brilliant. So many people from the community coming. So many came last year. Even more are coming this year. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I think uh, I did see a question on that. Actually, I think. It, I, must have uh, slipped my mind, but um, someone was asking roughly how many people are going to be attending this year. I don't know if we covered that. Um, well, we've got over 150 booked off the top of my wow. head. Um, the hotel itself is entirely sold out. Um, <laughs> we've got we have a waiting list of people in case anybody drops out of people, but there are other hotels nearby, so you totally and you can still get tickets. Um, we will be stopping selling the silver tickets on Monday, and the silver tickets include all your gaming and a three-course buffet lunch. So if you want a, a inclusive day ticket, then get it before Monday because the hotel has to plan how many people they're feeding. Um, but the bronze tickets, which is your sort of basic entry and um, you know some of the main main events, as it were. Um, then you can still get that even on the day. You can turn up on the day, and we will totally take your money and let you in. Awesome, awesome. Please do if you can. If you can, try, try and make it. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, just seeing. Oh, I, th I think everyone's chatting to themselves and they're answering their own <laughs> questions at the moment on there. Outrageous! I as, thought they were I, here to talk to us. Oh, <laughs> <I'm just> talking. <laughs> but they're, they are not. talking about graphics card and stuff. So I don't, I don't know if I'm uh, qualified to talk about that. <laughs> Uh, uh, somebody saying they might come to LaveCon. Totally come to LaveCon. Don't yes. might. Definitely do it. Absolutely. It'll be awesome. And we have. Uh, <laughs> let's see if we can put. We'll put the link in the chat for everyone uh, uh, in case you haven't seen the event. So it's. Uh, you can check out laveradio.com. There is a link at the top, but I'm going to try and get the direct link for everyone. Um, yeah. There we go. I'm going to post that in the chat there for everyone on there now. So yeah. So please do check that out if you can make it. It would be awesome to see you. Um, and I can't wait to get there. It's going to be great. Saturnine. Oh, uh, Saturnine started talking about uh, AMD graphics cards and various things. I thought people were going to start talking about the new, I think it's the AMD Fury ones or whatever they are, with the dual GPU craziness or something like that. I've heard that there's a few issues with those at the moment. That's about as far as my knowledge goes. Uh, quick, 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 trying to take this guy out so I can check the next question. <laughs> It's one, of, it's one of those it's things. Like, multitasking it is, thing again. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. It's like don't, don't take your eyes off the screen in case uh, you, you miss something or you crash into something. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to be rude and miss anyone's question. Um, Plipe, yes, Abacus will be there this year, and I am really, really pleased to say that uh, he's coming over a few days before. We're going to hang out. He's coming, come into my place. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to try and entertain him in my sleepy little village where there really is not much to do but it's going to be nice just to chill out and uh, maybe grab a few beers and uh, and uh, then we're going to head up to Lavecon. So it's going to be great! It's going to be awesome! <laughs> you can see Abacus is really excited! No, it's going to, be, it's going to be great to see him again. No, absolutely. And, you know, actually, I'm really impressed with with how far some people are coming to come mm. to, to LaveCon. We, we have an international audience, which is amazing. Um, people coming from the Netherlands, from Germany, from all over the place. It's it's brilliant. So, yeah, really excited about that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it, it's great to see that people take that effort to kind of stand by each other in the community and everything, which is really nice to see. Yeah, Ooh. definitely, definitely. Where's that anaconda gone? There she is. Oh, I chose to pick on a big spaceship, didn't I? Didn't I? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Silly yeah. crash. <laughs> it's always, always what I do. So this is this. This was the uh, the the risks I was I was running on the uh, the live demos we did at E3. It was you know, as I like, take on something I shouldn't really take on. <laughs> Should I do it? I, do I, I did the, the one time actually I felt really embarrassed because David was talking away about uh, the, the, the bits on there and he kind of said oh so you uh, why don't you go online sort of thing and, and play the game and I kind of like I was like mm, live on Twitch I was like do I want to go into open play live on Twitch and get people find me in the stream and kick my backside or shall I go into uh, solo mode and I bottled it and I thought I'm going to go into I got to solo mode and he, he kind of noticed I felt really awful about it afterwards I was like mm. But uh, I think I think he, uh, he he let me off. 
fair, fair. No, we've, we've, we've got a very entertaining question. It's making me laugh. Oh. From Wheatley T saying, <laughs> Will LaveCon have procedurally generated guests? Uh, <laughs> probably not. Uh, <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> Well, we could, well, I mean, if we all uh, if we all share the various bits of cosplay that are there, and we just mix and match them as we go yeah, through, yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, It'll be fine. I mean, that's yeah. kind of Sounds like having like yeah, like a procedurally generated. We get everyone into the green screen with a different piece on, and then we just rotate around. Everyone will just swap costumes, and it'll look like there's literally thousands and thousands of procedurally generated guests because they'll all be different. So that's awesome. Let's do that. <laughs> I just invented another event. Yeah, like... Yay! <laughs> what I needed was more competition. Yeah, more Yay! more stuff to squeeze in. Yeah. Oh, uh, brilliant! <laughs> oh, dear, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean that's the thing. There's going to be so much to do anyway. We don't we don't need to invent more events. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, the 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 program is packed. It's fantastic. So yeah, no, there's going to be plenty to do. I I defy anybody to get bored. It'll be fine. <laughs> Plenty of content, absolutely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, because I've been chatting away, I'm going to go ahead and put the peak of the week from the newsletter up on the screen for everyone to to watch. That should come up in a second. Uh, yeah, so the, the peak of the week from the newsletter, I think, it, was it called Elevate? I believe it was mentioned in there. Um, an orbiting space elevator, which is one of the maps for the new CQC mode, which is going to be showing up in the game uh, or on the Xbox uh, this month sometime, I, I've heard. Uh, which would be really, really awesome, and I just I want everyone to try it out and get their hands on it because uh, it, I really, really enjoyed it, and I think I think anyone who likes that kind of PvP competitive play is really, really going to appreciate that mode coming into the game, and uh, I think it's nice that Frontier have recognised and made a, a point to come out there and say that they think it's going to be really, really fun for explorers as well. That you know when you're stuck. A huge distance away from anywhere and you want to just try to get a little bit of combat, a little bit of action, you can just switch into that that different menu mode there and just get in there and try it. I think that's a really, really important thing uh, that they've done there to make that distinction between the two modes. Uh, that's good. Yeah, it's... it's. I know that it's kind of been a point of contention. A lot of people saying, oh, you know, I, I want it to be more uh, in-game and more integrated into the rest of the game and stuff like that, but I can understand the reasons why Frontier are worried that that is a problem. I mean, there is PvP you can do in the main mode, you can get involved, you can pirate other players and things like that, so if you do want PvP, it is still there, but if you want that PvP which is in a more structured, controlled environment and doesn't descend into that argument of you're griefing you and I'm griefing them and all that kind of stuff, then uh, it's nice to know that they've actually thought about that and given people the, op the options. So. Yeah, yeah, it's good because it means that ultimately the game appeals to more people because you've got more options about how to play it. So that's <laughs> exactly. really good. Uh, and this is this is the point that I, I'm always trying to stress with people: is Frontier are trying to make a game with features in that appeal to a wide range of different audiences, different people, different tastes, and different uh, you know things they want to do in the game. So there's always going to be things that come in, and people are going to say, "Oh, I don't like this. I really don't like this." It's like that, that's okay. It's okay to say you don't like it. <laughs> You don't have to you do don't that. have to do that one. Yeah. Do something exactly. else. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. It's it's you know, I, I mean, I I could I could say for one that you know I I'm not sure I'm really gonna like the getting out and walking around in my spaceship because I I play Elite because I want a space game. I want to be flying a, a spaceship. I mean, I like the idea of landing on planets and everything that comes along with it. But in terms of the actually getting out and going into a first-person shooter mode, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that. You know, I I don't know so it's one of those things it's, it's okay to say you don't like something uh, yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> uh, any more questions that we've missed or missed, uh, missed, 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 missed uh, Vonatar greetings commander <laughs> Cap capital <laughs> letters to get my attention that's, that's okay absolutely <laughs> he knows you so well uh, so, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> look the shiny oh it's shiny. Like, oh. Ooh, shiny yeah I'm terrible I'm terrible <laughs> for that that's, that's why I kind of had to give up exploring because it was taking me so long to do anything, and it was like every time I'd see something interesting on the horizon, it was like, ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny. And it was just, <laughs> it literally took me a week to get back to civilization because there was just so many interesting things out there. <laughs> I'm terrible, I'm, 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 you know, worse than the, uh, what's, what's the, the dog off up, isn't it? It's like, yes. Yeah. Just take, take a look at this, ooh, squirrel, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, 
concentration, concentration. Ah, uh, oh, I nearly clipped one of my. Well, um, Vonatar74 has a question. Ooh, go ahead. Rash, honest question. Do you think the game needs more exciting and dynamic content? I'm tired of the progress bar grind, personally. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, it, I think this, this kind of follows on from what we were just saying there. It's one of those things that you've got to find something you want to do. And it, the, the game fits me very well because I like variety. I like chopping and changing and doing different things. Uh, Earlier on in this week before I was streaming, I, I was off trading. I was grinding through trading and I was enjoying it because it was different. It was something else to do. I'm doing a bit of combat tonight because I fancied something different to do. I, I wanted to get into a bit of action and, and do something a bit more fun. Um, tomorrow I was thinking, well, you know, I've got some CC credits to hand in, so I think I might do a little bit of paraplay. I think that's the key thing for people to do is don't destroy yourself trying to race to one end goal and, and, and do one thing like you know grind your way through one of the bars just do a little bit at a time do something different you know play some missions jump in a different ship and try to vary your gameplay that's that's kind of how you've got to think about it the game is big and has a lot of content in there but you've just got to look in the right place for it instead of trying to just race to the top, get an anaconda, get to elite rating, and then sitting there thinking, well, there's nothing else for me to do. And it was like, well, you rushed through it. You didn't enjoy it. You know, you didn't enjoy the journey. And I think that's how you got to look at it. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not saying that I wouldn't want loads more exciting content. I'd love to see <coughs> the variety in the mission structures. And uh, I, I was a big proponent of it early on during the design discussion, saying that uh, when, when the topic came up about the mission structures and things like that, saying that the key thing I'd like to see is, is variety. That's the thing that I, I think is really, really important, in, particularly with procedure generated content, is to have a lot of different... Uh, not necessarily... Oh, sorry, not, not necessarily different key points like uh, different people and different locations and things like that, but different structures, different story arcs, different branches that the mission can take and things like that. Um, and that was something that I, I would really like to see more stuff like that come into the game. But it, I'm not immediately bored because I, I feel that there isn't enough of that, for example, which I see a lot of people saying that, oh, you know, <laughs> there isn't enough of this. And it's like, well, have you considered maybe you've done too much of that and now it's time to try something else? I mean, that, that's... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think, I think that's the only way you can really approach the game. It, it, it is a broad game with a lot of stuff, and it is, it is filling out. It, it is getting more and more content as it, as it comes along and as it improves. I mean, if you look back at the early alpha, it, it's, I know it's hard to remember back that far and look at what the game was, and it's kind of like... And this is going to sound really soppy, but it, it's like seeing a child grow up. Because I, I, and it sounds like a silly analogy, but I've seen this with my boys. It's like I haven't noticed them get older, you know, it, it's quite the same way as other people. Like I, I might uh, go and visit some relatives who live, live quite far away, sort of thing, and we we'll go and see them. And it's like, oh, haven't you got big, sort of thing? And you realise it's like, yeah, looking at them, it's like, yeah, they've they've grown a few inches and they've, you know, improved on their their school and you know they, they're getting more chatty with you and things like that. And it's like, yeah. It really has. It's been a big jump, and I think that's the same thing with with the game development that they're going for with Elite Dangerous. Is it's that the slow incremental improvements that we're seeing. Everything's continuously improving and getting better, version after version. But when you're this close to it and you're seeing it every day, it can feel like the game isn't moving along. So, I think it's yeah. No, that's that's totally fair. Totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> a bizarre analogy, but it's it, it's, it yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it fits. As Abacus said earlier on, it's patience, TM. That's the that should be the. We'll get that get that printed. <laughs> it is. And as, you know, I mean, David Braben said right from the very start of the Kickstarter that they they plan they've planned the game to be a slow burn project. It's something they're going to continue to support for many years to come. It's not something they wanted to get out the door and there it is done. It's you know that's it sorted. Boom. And we might do an update every now and then. It's something they've said from right from the get-go that they want to continuously improve the game piece by piece, and it it is very much doing that. So if you do feel like you're getting bored, I think my my recommendation would be try something else. Just try a different aspect of the game, and don't be afraid or ashamed to think, oh, put the game down for a couple of days and try something <laughs> else. It's you're not deserting the community by turning around and playing GTA for goodness sake. I mean, <laughs> I know. Or even, even, and I'm going to make a controversial suggestion now. Go outside and see fresh air. Yes, I mean, <laughs> that's yeah, allowed this, too. Yes, I mean, 
whilst this is a wonderful rendition of the Milky Way, the, the real one is just out there for you to go experience. <laughs> don't don't feel ashamed. You know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, it is an important thing. I think people to get too stuck up with this, and I think um, they get stuck with this this thought that they they must love the game. They absolutely have to love the game, and if they're not loving the game, there's something wrong, and it needs to be corrected and stuff like that. No, and I think. It, it's it's silly to think like that, you know, just killing yourself over something, you know, and torturing your, <laughs> yourself over this idea that... It, I, th I think we've scared some people in the chat room. They, they appear to think outside is total madness and mm. then, that, you know, it's burning and hot and bad. <laughs> Fresh air, Suzy <laughs> Land! <laughs> No, it's not yeah, that bad. No, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to upset you, you know. <laughs> Come on here, make these crazy suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh well, yes. I'll, I'll be back in my box. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. No, we, we like crazy suggestions. We'll have to get you on again. <laughs> uh, Elan is trying to remember. I'm not strict on caps. Use all the caps you want. I don't know. Um, did, 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 did I miss a question on there? FPS? Problem with FPS? Are you talking about the Star Citizen thing? I. I I'm not going to ban anyone for talking about Star Citizen, don't worry. Oh, you... oh that's no, still I, 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 <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? How, how dare we discuss another game on the Street Master? No, I haven't got a problem with it. I do play other games. Contrary to popular <gasps> opinion, I know, it's shocker. Shocker. <laughs> I find the time. <laughs> Wait, wait, see, see it's, that's the great thing with an iPad, you know, whilst I'm traveling, yeah, traveling yeah. between locations, I can <laughs> pop, pop a game on for a minute and play something else. Uh, but no, I, 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 I do play other games, you know, so I'm not... <laughs> Somewhere in between my crazy busy schedule and uh, you know, and occasionally making time for my wife and kids. Have we missed any other questions on there? Uh, dee -dee -dee. <laughs> yeah, XLG is is outside similar to the, the the other game that Mad Dog plays. Yes, I believe it is. It's, it, <laughs> It does look a lot like GTA, yes. Yeah, yeah, I hate to say this. You know, we mentioned that we were playing Jugger at the thing. I, I hate to say that it's not a computer game. It is, it is a game outside, and, and there will be physical activity involved. I'm very sorry. <laughs> it is optional, though. I won't make you. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, well no, I'll, I'll, I'll make you, but I won't make them. No, no, <laughs> no. And I know that there was talk on Lave Radio this week about trying to get the, uh, the Frontier team versus the Lave Radio team, I think. I, I get the impression we're going to be massively outnumbered, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, tell you, the, the way Alan was talking, he was, you know, throwing around the gauntlet with with great, you know, disdain, so, yeah. <laughs> It'll be funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, important question there, actually. That's, that's a good one from jo uh, Johnny uh, PGT there. Quick question for you guys. Has the game miscalculated for you whilst trading and taking away uh, 2.5 million credits? I can say... Yes, this happened to me the other day. Um, they, I think they were doing some server updates at the time. I got a transaction failure. Thought I had a cargo hold full of nearly three million tons of gold, and when I got to my destination, it wasn't there. But the money had been distract, uh, been uh, taken away. Um, <clears throat> I will say I contacted support and. I had my cargo back in about five minutes, and the next day I had an email apologising, saying, "Hey, we've given you the credits back as well, which is fantastic." I mean, the customers more. I cannot big them up enough. They really are responding to things very, very quickly these days. So, if you've had a problem like that, and it's been some server side glitch or something, please do get onto the. Uh, I think it's support.elitedangerous.com. Uh, check out the FAQ on there. Put in a ticket, and those guys will respond to you really quickly. Yeah, I can't, I can't big them up enough actually, because I know there's a lot of people raise the points about things that you know early on they didn't have the support there and stuff, but they have massively amped up the support team, and those guys are working crazy, crazy hours uh, all the time, uh, and you will. What's that? Uh, can can Victor, you supported, you contacted support and got a rock? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I think it might be on the outside theme. We've scared a few of them, I think, uh, with mentioning the outside <laughs> word. <laughs> They've all run away. It's like, no, we cannot, cannot step outside of this universe on there. But, uh, you can always come back indoors and put the oh, Oculus yeah, yeah. Rift on and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. will be fine. Back at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Uh... 
Elan, you can't help but think that ambassadors have slightly more positive experience to support than everyone else. No, no, I, it's, it's, I know it, it, it sounds that way, but no, it, it generally isn't. I spoke to other people as well, and uh, they, they've contacted them, and they've just gone in touch within about 20 minutes, and boom, put money back, uh, respawned them back in a location with their ship and things like that. You know, you will, you will get an answer off them if you're fair, and just be polite to them. Be friendly, you know. Don't if you're going to go in and put a support ticket in and start screaming and swearing at people, then you're probably not going to get a very quick answer off someone <laughs> like that. They, they are human. Treat them with respect, and you will you will get a, a pleasant answer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, game de game developers are people too. I know. Again, another shocking and controversial statement. But there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I I can't express that enough. It's. It's one of those things that people just completely lose themselves and they just treat a games company as this black box that just does stuff. And it's, it is it is easy to forget, I suppose. I mean, we're all used to that. Uh, you know, you go into a shop, you buy a game and you, and just, you expect it to be this way. And you don't consider where it's come from. You don't look at the how the sausage is made, so to speak. And I can say uh, I've, I've had the, the privilege of experience that it is nice to kind of see there and get the human aspect of it and realise that yes, there are humans behind this game that want it to be as awesome as it possibly can be. So there is no point being rude or you know just shouting and screaming at them like you know like I was saying about the uh, the graphics things earlier on this week. Once the guys were aware of it, they were disappointed that people found that it was, in some cases, not as good as what they, they wanted. And they've jumped straight on it. It's like, yes, we want to get this back in. We want to improve this. Because they want the game to be awesome, too. They love the game as much as we do. So, Absolutely. <laughs> because they're a night full of revelations. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Games developers are people too. We mm, should yes. use that as a highlight for the evening. Yes. I need that on a, I need that on a t-shirt. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, I think Abacus is totally right. The mm. truth is somewhere outside. <laughs> yeah. People. People. Brilliant. Build up these uh, these visions in their mind about how things work and how things are put together, and it's like sadly it's it's usually far from this <laughs> imagination. Yes, yeah, so there there isn't some perfect formula where the games just come into existence and uh, you pay money and they happen. You know, there is people do have to sit there and toil over it to make these things happen. It takes yeah. a lot of time and effort. Absolutely, and dare I say it to you know, go back to our earlier theme. Obviously, come to Lavecom, meet some of the developers, and find out that they're real people. Yes, and buy them a drink, pat, prove it. Yes, <laughs> shake their hand, pat them on the back. They are fantastic folks, and they do an incredibly hard job. Um, I think I, one of the the guys I uh, was, we were just preparing everything for E3, and one of the guys was saying, "Yeah, I'm going to shoot off now because uh, I think he was he was in the office until 5 a.m. Monday morning. They worked all weekend the weekend oh, before, goodness. yeah, to get that's things prepped." Insane. <laughs> You know that's the level of effort these guys are putting in to get things up and going for us. So, uh, hat goes off to them, I think. Yeah, totally. There's not not many people who want to be doing their their day job at 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> well, that's that's the great thing about these guys. It's like they are so passionate about it. They are, they willingly do this. They, <laughs> you know, it's like they they're not uh, forcefully held in the office and told you must get this update on. It's like they are all there wanting this to be absolutely brilliant. And uh, hat, like I said tip my hat to them. It takes a lot of uh, effort and stamina to uh, to be doing that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, someone's mentioned the Thargoids in the chat. I, I, we're going to have to go back to my earlier thing. I can neither confirm nor deny the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the Thargoids may or may not be outside. We have not checked for Thargoids. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> No, I don't want to get controversial like I did last time. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Actually, I can say anything I like on the basis I know nothing. No, no. Anything <laughs> I say is probably lies. Unless it relates to Lavecon, then, I, then I'm good. But no. otherwise, it's lies. <laughs> I think that, that's one of the things I, I do really miss, actually. When, when I first started doing the stream, I genuinely didn't know a lot about what was going on, what was coming up and everything. And it was nice that I could sit here and speculate and it was fun, I could chat away and think. Now there's just too many things that happen and people are like, 
oh, he said that, it must be true. And then, I, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's crazy. It's like things like I found myself, I was quoted in the Elite Wiki as saying that there, there's more about the unknown artifacts than people have discovered yet and things like that. And I'm like, why am I being quoted? I'm like, this is insane. It's insane. It's like, you know, it's, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I did speak to the guys and say, they did say to me, no one's figured out what the unknown artifacts are. So there are more there. Uh, than what people are saying, but at the same time, I don't know. I could have asked them. I, I specifically said to Ben, no, I don't want to know. I want the surprise when the community finds out what they are. I want I want to, you know, have that enjoyment of being part of the folks that find it out. So, uh... Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes knowing what's going on behind the curtain is not always a good thing. Sometimes it's nice to be out the front and yeah. kind of going, this looks so shiny! <laughs> And the nice thing is, I think, is the uh, the guys at Elite appreciate the fact that I, I'm one of the, the strangest kind of people in that respect, uh, fan-wise, that it's, I'm in this perfect position. I can find out anything I want to find out with the game, and they desperately want to tell someone because they're really excited about it. And I'm like, no, 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 don't tell me. Spoilers, I don't want to know. Don't tell me. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait for it to come into the game, and then I'll, and then I'll find out. You know, it's, that's, that's just me. That's, I, I'm mad like that, I know. No, no, um, it's totally fair. On the subject of variety, I know we picked up on this earlier on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back. I'm gonna try something different now. Um, <laughs> gaming with Ian, yeah, he's just <laughs> hit the nail on the head. Welcome to the internet, a place where anything you say is no longer safe. Yes, totally true. <laughs> I, I've been misquoted to, uh, to hacking back. Yes, I'm saying. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> and T Cork, yeah, you started the next rumor now that uh, Crash is claiming that the Thargoids are all fabrications and they're not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, then you see threads pop up saying there's going to be different aliens because Crash has confirmed that the Thargoids don't exist. Ah! <laughs> Panic and speculation go wild. Yeah, it's that's that's yeah. what happens. <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. Now, on the subject, there was something I did see in the chatter actually. Uh, Careful. Are we missing yes, things? I no, 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 no. Um, there was something I wanted to bring up from the uh, from the newsletter. Yes, the the top top part of Galnet. Now, I know people people sometimes miss this, but it's really important. I'm going to just read it verbatim because I think it's quite uh, quite important. So, in this week's news, hundreds of businesses have closed and thousands of people are quarantined following an outbreak aboard Newton Dock in what could be the most devastating epidemic of the decade. The illness, the origins of which are completely unknown, has made its way across much of the region. Reports are coming in from the surrounding systems indicating that the infection might already be spreading. So, <laughs> I'm... Da, da, da. <laughs> news tonight yeah i mean i love things like this in the galnet because like i said people seem to miss it there's there's these interesting little tidbits of information that are going out there and spreading you know has this illness got anything to do with the unknown artifacts who knows um, said it now, like, <laughs> exactly that's that's gonna go on someone's gonna be updating the wiki article in about five minutes and putting that in there but uh you know there's, no one knows what those spores were doing they you know they were damaging your system modules you know, um, Maybe. getting into your air conditioning and all that stuff. But uh, you know, it, it, this is the thing that people people miss these little bits of information, like in the Galnet news and stuff like that, and don't realise that it's all there. All the content is there for us to find out. We just got to put two and two together and come up with four instead of five or negative one. You know. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, one of the fantastic things about the Elite Dangerous game is how deep and rich this, the game world as a whole is. You know, there are so many things out there to play with, and that you know is obviously reflected in the various fiction and novels and what have you. So, you know, it it is a a, a rich and exciting world, definitely. Yeah, and you know, it, it's, it, even things like this, it's, it's almost like this kind of a meta game outside of the game that people are trying to decode what these things mean, what these stories are, what the unknown artifacts are about, and stuff like that. It's fantastic. There's, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, that's that's what. It's just I can't understand when people are saying it's like, oh, there's there's not enough to do in the game and stuff like that. It's like, are you serious? It's like you know, there's, <laughs> it's, there's bits everywhere. You know, it's like yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things you can get involved in and do. You know, and it doesn't even have to be logged into the game playing it. You can be uh, checking out the stories and contributing to the community and you know, so much you can do. That's uh, fab, it's definitely. It is, you know, it, it is really nice to see a game like this now which is so deep and involving on so many levels rather than something which is kind of, a lot of games over recent years have just become this uh, 
uh, like cookie cutter kind of style of games that you see coming out, first person shooters, just just the same kind of stuff year after year coming out. So it's nice to see something which is breaking the mold and trying to do something different. And you know, I admit outright that not everything works, not everything's to everyone's taste. You know, there's a lot of people which are saying they don't really like the sound of CQC, and it's. But I've spoke to a lot of people who were just coming on the Xbox and saying they can't wait for CQC. Right back yes. to, the, to you know to the first <clears throat> first point at the start of the evening. They're making a varied game for a very broad range of people, so it's okay to admit you don't like some part of it. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's parts of it you do like, then it's all good. <laughs> oh dear, I just noticed in the chat now, not only uh, am, I, am I getting quoted on some of those things, but they're going to try and capture my face. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's going to be a whole thread on that. Judging by the expression on Crash's face, he must be confirming that Thargoids are going to be replaced with minions. I would love to see an epidemic outbreak of minions. Oh, yes, everyone, yeah, everyone's going to... I love it. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few issues there, but you know, oh, it sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> brilliant. Uh, hopefully, hopefully at some point Frontier will uh, free up the engine for, for external use and uh, we can start writing some total conversions. <laughs> Minion Galaxy. That would be... Uh, Brilliant. I would love it. I would love it. I said, I mean, very early on, and just after the Kickstarter, because I, 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 I said, you know, are you guys going to open up the, the the engine for modding and things like that at some point in the future? Because I would love to do some kind of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy tie-in. I think it would be absolutely awesome just having the the infinite improbability drive me able to jump anywhere in the galaxy and you don't know where you're going to turn <laughs> up. You know, it would be amazing. I think that would be brilliant fun. Yeah, just as long as you don't forget your towel. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you must always know where your towel is. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, uh, did, I, did I sell that? I'm, I'm losing track now. So many menus. Yep, I did do that. <laughs> hmm. Okay, confusing. So I'm going to head up now and get rid of some of these. Uh, got to hand in these CCs and help out. Just, uh, I don't want to miss any questions. Don't think anyone's in there. <laughs> Elaborate, he's got a good one on there. Two plus two divided by zero. Thargoid's confirmed, and Half Life Three is inbound. <laughs> 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 yep, yep. That's kind of how I feel these things play out. It's like you know, I, I don't mean to say anything it's crazy, but people make crazy from it. So <laughs> there we go. Um, it says. Um, Abacus says, yes, we need more flowers and whales in the galaxy for <laughs> Definitely. And mice. Don't forget the mice. <laughs> bowl of petunias. Yes, yes. Oh, I, I would oh, love that. Brilliant. That would make my day. Absolutely. Definitely. So, uh, flicking down through the chat. Oh, I haven't got this image in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the link into the chat for the newsletter in a second. But this is really, really awesome. Now, I've been watching uh, this, this guy build up the... Uh, this seat. He's built a, a specific seat for Elite Dangerous to fit the the hottest controller and everything in. And I've been watching on the forums. He's been posting up some making of images as he's been going along. And it is absolutely awesome. I really want one of these. I'm hoping at some point in the future I can actually uh, put something together like that. It would be great. It would be great. Very cool. Yeah. And can we actually... Yes, we can get to that. Uh, and the last thing in the newsletter, I want to bring it on there, the Elite Racers Galileo opening day is going to be uh, kicking in the second season very soon. So I'm going to go ahead and put that link up for everyone as well if they haven't seen that. Uh, and again, you know, this is going back to some of the st stuff we were saying on there. People saying, oh, there's, there's, there's no content, there's no content. It's like people are making all these crazy events and things are happening and stuff. It's like, you, you know, it's, it's all there for you to do. Destruction derbies, you know, you can just... These things are there for you to do. I mean, I'm, I missed a lot of the racing stuff when it first came out. Uh, uh, the first time around, I, I saw some of the videos, people like racing uh, eagles around the, the docking ports and things like that. Um, but I'm hoping I can kind of get involved with a few more of these things this time. It'd be great to do it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm kind of hoping at some point in the future, maybe. I mean, the CQC stuff, I know it's all about the competitive multiplayer and that kind of stuff. I'd love to see racing in there. I mean, I'm sure you could arrange it. You could have teams of people that decide, you know, no weapons, I'm just going to make my own racing thing. And that's the great thing about it. I mean, when I played CQC, all of the options from the main game were available in there. You know, I could go into silent running, I could go into stealth mode, I can do anything I wanted to do from all the other things. So I'm sure people could 
set up a uh, a proper racing tournament in CQC. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be cool. That would be very cool. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh, you do it. <laughs> I just I was just notified of something. Uh, no, oh, damn it, damn it. <laughs> Gaming with Ian, can you remove that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the look of concentration. Oh <laughs> dear, yeah, I was just an idiot. I just uh, never mind. Everyone knows my face now, anyway. <laughs> oh, I just posted something. I shouldn't have posted. Never mind. Moving along, we're just we're, we're smoking mirrors, smoking mirrors. Don't look. Ah, uh, brilliant. Um, you've got the message saying, "Hey, Crash, don't forget to mention the charity event with yourself, Tony, and the others with mm. one figure on the fourth and fifth um, of this weekend." He's totally mentioned it. Yes. But I'm sure we'll mention it again just because we can. Yeah. Let's see if we can. <laughs> right. Let's get the link. Okay. So there's, there's a just giving link as well. Yeah. It's it's really really important. I. I can't stress enough. Um, I really want to support James on everything on this. You know, he's doing a uh, a 24-hour streaming event. I believe he's starting tomorrow. Um, let's so see if we can get on his page. He's already got 140 pens on. That's awesome. I'm going to spam this link. I'm going to spam this link for everyone. Please <laughs> go. Even if you can just donate a pen, please get in there, donate. I'm going to be supporting him. He's going to be playing uh, Elite GTA amongst other games. He's going to be uh, playing on that. I'm going to stop in and help him out, get involved, uh, uh, probably let him shoot me in GTA a few times, which I'm sure everyone will find hilarious, uh, but it's going to be really, really great. And it is for a great cause for cancer research, so uh, please do support him. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm just checking midday tomorrow. Yes, he said midday to midday. That's going to be insane. So lunchtime tomorrow, he's going to be streaming away. I'm going to try and pop in with him as soon as I can and stay as long as I can to help support him through. Uh, probably into the wee hours of, <laughs> wee hours of Sunday, maybe. Because <laughs> as we've said before, sleep is an optional, right? Exactly. That's don't need sleep. So overrated. energy drink is for us. I can say, leave gone. Drink. Everybody drink. <laughs> Uh, ooh, question there, uh, Elan. Have Frontier said they're not planning for a spectator mode for CQC? Um, it came up in conversation at E3, and I did actually talk to the designers about it. It's something they would like to do, but I don't know whether they've got the time or the resource to get it in for that first release. They definitely are interested in it. They really want the CQC thing to come become like a an eSport type thing. And of course, eSport, it's all about the spectator modes and stuff. People love to see that. Uh, you know, just just watch these kind of events play out. So I think that's that's something they they really really want to do. But it's 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 not in there yet. Now, now I admit, <laughs> the version of CQC that I saw was uh, basically a dev build. It, it, no one, it's eyes only. No one else is going to see it. It had uh, you know placeholder menus and things in there, placeholder text in a lot of places. So. I have no idea what is going to come in the final build of CQC, so that I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to come into it. Um, I know they had things like leaderboards and stuff, which weren't there when I saw it, but they were planning on it. So that's the great thing about it. They really are open to that feedback and suggestions from the community that if enough people on the Xbox version play in CQC term and say, hey, we want spectator mode, we really, really want it, then I imagine they will be absolutely positive on adding that instant. Oh no, Vonatar, I just noticed thing. I was just about to answer your question and you had a huge power cut. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear, well feel free to ask again. I, I, I have no issue with that. Uh, and I think... We've gone through... All the questions on there. Gaming with you and you were 17 last time you stayed awake 24 hours. Yeah, well, uh, that's, that's... Yeah, sadly, we're not, and none of us are as young as we used to be. No, no, and that's, that's one advantage that James has on his side. Uh, yeah, that's true, that's but, true. Uh, I will be uh, staying away as long as I can. That's why I, I have to consume a copious amount of energy drinks now just to get me through. You know, I, I still, <laughs> still want to play as many games as I used to, but I just can't do it. No, it's fair. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. See, did you, did you, oh, Elan's got a good point on their peer-to-peer. -peer, you feel that peer-to-peer -peer is not going to work for CQC. It has to be managed outside. Um, maybe that's why it's accessed by a different option in the menu. Honestly, I, I don't know whether they're changing the networking model for it at all. I know that they're working on doing it as uh, six versus six player uh, matches. Or, or up to 12 player matches, so it doesn't fit into the current understanding of how we've got like uh, four player wings and things like that. I, I, so they are definitely changing some things, but I, I honestly don't know how much is changing. <laughs> oh, it's a good question for you there, actually, Karen. Oh, what's that? Uh, what other types of games do you like to play? I'm, I'm a massive Tekken fan. I know that's that's clearly not a very complex game, but I, I love it. You know. I don't know why it's my, it's my go-to game that oh. whenever I I run out of other games to play I go back to Tekken and beat something up and the stress goes away. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. I I must admit and this this is going to be shocking, I know, I know. I am terrible at fighting games. Arrow really dish. terrible. So so I'm, <laughs> it would be really fun if it's there at Lavecon next week because it would be so hilarious for people to catch you kicking my backside on Tekken. I think that would be that would be awesome. Ah, uh, brilliant. I, again, we'll have to see what we can do. <laughs> I say, I'm, I'm sorry, again, I've been creating more events. I know, I'm terrible. Uh, I'm terrible. Outrageous. I know. I know. Karen beats Karen in a second. Yeah, no, that sounds like a thing. <laughs> that, that would be all over Twitter in, in minutes. It would be, be Yeah, yeah fun. totally. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that'd be good. I mean, last... Oh, sorry. I just, I'm just imagining the scenario now. That would be. Uh, yeah. See, this is this is the problem I've I, I've had with. Uh, I think people just keep seem to think that they they need to beat me at things to prove a point. You know, I have people that like call me out on Twitter and it's like, oh, I want to I want to find you in game and uh, and uh, get into some <laughs> PvP with you and beat you up. And it's like I'm not really the best pilot out there. I mean, you look at some of the videos from like Isonona and the 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 flight assist off videos that they do and the. You know some of the other things that there are some fantastic players out there that are much better than me. You really aren't proving anything by kicking my backside. <laughs> it's, uh, you you know, see, it's, it's the price of fame. It's, I tell you. <laughs> it's a big target on my back. You know, it's, uh, oh, brilliant. What have, I, what have I done? I've set myself up for for fame. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm liking the quote. Uh, Karash challenges a lady to a fight at Lake. <laughs> well, you know what? If we can't get Tekken there, we'll totally have have lots of um, live roleplay weapons. I, I could totally oh, take no. that. <laughs> Beating me into submission with one of the jugger weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. That's the knob. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah, I can imagine the scene now. I, th this, I think that just proves that LaveCon is going to be absolutely hilarious this year. It's going to be really, really good fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Dobbo's asking a question, are we going to have a speed docking contest um, this year with SJ's minions getting in the way? I'm not sure about the minions, but um, yeah, speed docking will totally be taking part in, the, in taking place in the land, so absolutely, various competitions and things going on, um, as well as a Chaos Reborn tournament, which you can take part in whether you're on the land or, or not, as it were so um yeah there's going to be a little bit of fun going on so lots of things to take part in awesome awesome i'd be keen just to watch the chaos reborn i mean unfortunately I, i've been so busy i've not caught much of it but i would really love to get him, uh, and watch that that'd be really really cool yeah definitely no i think it's it's going to be exciting as I said it's just trying to work out how you can be in that many places at once. Know, that's, that's my only problem <laughs> we need, we need. Well, that and all the million one other things i have to do but it's fine it's fine <laughs> <laughs> need to need to clone me. I think clone all of us, the whole Lave Radio crew. I think we need more yeah, of us. Totally, totally. <laughs> Lave Radio minions. That's that's going to be a Photoshop job. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the thread to appear. Um, it. It'll be great. <laughs> Uh, Neth oh, uh, yep, Elan's just answered uh, Neth Nethlam's question there. Yes, there are three modes planned for CQC. It's going to be straight up deathmatch, 12 players, 6v6 team deathmatch, and 6v6 capture the flag or capture the data sphere. Because we like context in the elite universe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Abacus has said, Karash, challenge the lady to a caffeine duel. Easy Ooh. win for you. Yeah, I, I suck with caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm useless so yeah no he would totally win that one it's totally true <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah hands down <laughs> 
Yeah, no, if it, if it's downing a pint, I might have a chance, but yeah, yeah, not. See, I'm not, yeah I'm not a big drinker, so I mean, if, yeah, you uh, see, I, I reckon I could do that one, but yeah, I'm not so good with the coffee. Yeah, we'll get the we'll get the Dockers recording out of the way, or maybe just before the Dockers up, we'll start the drinking then, just before Dockers, and then uh, we'll see how long I can stay upright. That'll yeah, be, uh, it yeah. seems fine. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, I, I get the impression I'm going to be drunk under the tape by a lady now, so <laughs> I'm gonna hang my head in shame. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I, there's been a couple of comments. I missed the. I sort of saw the early comment, but didn't comment on that. Um, Chris Viking was refer- uh, referencing text-based mud games. <laughs> oh my goodness, Chris, you are you are totally showing up all of our age. Stop it at once. <laughs> <laughs> Half the people in here probably don't know what you're talking about. Sadly, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, what's that? Oh, oh, Ryan Extreme. Yes, I, I. I've, Thank you very much for that offer. That would be very, very kind of your uh, your father to to buy me a buy me a drink. I, I'm going to try and accept as many drinks off people as I can, but I get the impression they're going to be lined up. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the stream out of the way first, and then and then yeah, then we'll hopefully we'll, we'll relax a little bit. Game on, I'm, fine. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that most people know how to use the riffs, so I can kind of just yeah, just loosely point them in the direction. And uh, yeah, I've, I've drunk too much at this point. I'm sorry, you know. Oh, oh, Chris, Chris has commented that showing up your age. He says he's only 31 I, I've, I've, I'm not going to comment on how old I am <laughs> no. I'm hiding my grey hairs by just being on, <laughs> being on the Skype it's fine <laughs> no no I think I, wow it's it's a it's a varied community I, I think this this is this is one of the lovely things about the um, the Xbox launch I think and I, I don't want to keep rabbiting on a bit because I know people kind of they they know where I stand with this. I think it's fantastic that the community is is changing and evolving and it's being inclusive of of newer groups of, of people and stuff like that. And I think it really is that point now where we as a community need to to grow and learn that you know we're not the key most important people anymore. We need to kind of realize that newer people are coming to the game, younger people are coming into the game and enjoying the game. You know, we were there once, you know, I, I, I still remember when I was 10 playing Frontier Elite 2 on the Amiga sort of thing. That's where we all started and we've got to accept that there are new people coming into the game and, uh, and a new generation and that's, I think we really need to get behind that and back that and support that and encourage people to, uh, to get into the game because there are people out there that are going to love the game and may not have heard of it and I think that's something that we all need to try and uh, help do. You know, if nothing yeah, more, then, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think I think any game and any community, you know, unless you have new people coming in, you know, you don't grow as a community. You don't do more exciting things, meet more exciting people. And I think one of the fantastic things about this game and this community um, is that it it is, you know, it is a growing community. It it is bringing in new people to computer gaming, to gaming, to science fiction, you know, to all sorts of avenues that that leads to. Um, and that's that's no bad thing. So you know, yeah, I definitely think that's a good thing. And I think the you know the Xbox and what have you, it is a platform that a lot of the sort of younger um, generation. And now I sound like my dad um, <laughs> <laughs> talking about the younger generation. Um, you know, it it is more accessible to some people, and that's no bad thing. It might not be for you, but it's it's not a bad thing for the community as a whole. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just trying to get. A, I've got props for tonight's show. You know, <laughs> that's like breaking something. <laughs> God, 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 there it is. There it is. This, this. I have to make a point. This, this was the first thing I played the original Elite on. You know, this Nintendo Entertainment Console. I was a console gamer. It, it does not make you any less of a person to play on a console other than the PC. This, this ridiculous kind of platform discrimination that you see in a lot of these things. I, I hate it. I think it's silly. There's no reason for it. We really should just be open and welcoming of, of new people coming into the community and how that. I mean, that's one of the things I loved first on in the Kickstarter. People coming in uh, saying they heard about the game and the community was so welcoming at that point and I think we just need to really take a step back and get back to that really nice friendly position we were in, I, I would love that to happen. Absolutely, I mean everybody I've met from the community, and I've met a number of people now, um, you know it has been, has been so friendly, so welcoming to anybody and you know I think that is a, a fantastic thing about, about the Elite Dangerous community and I think that's you know something that's worth celebrating definitely. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it hasn't died away, I think a lot of people have just kind of stepped away from it and just kind of, uh, you know, 
this happens when a community grows you, you get a lot of people coming in you know the as it gets bigger the quantity of trolls that exist on there kind of it seems a lot more because it's a you know a percentage of the community and stuff like that but i think we you know we as a community we just need to look past that and continue to be positive about it you know that's why i've always been enthusiastic and energetic about everything to do with elite because i think it's it, it can be a great community if we all just try to be positive all the time i think it's it can be fantastic so. Yeah, I mean, and Vonatar on the um, chat has a has a good point in that he says, Crash, the reason for platform discrimination is that PC games get dumbed down for console specs. Not surprising some people object to that. Mm. No, and I mean, if, if it is having a detrimental effect on a particular game, you can understand someone being upset, but then it's having a positive effect on a community. So, yeah. you know, it depends which, which you're celebrating at the time, as it were. And, you know, hopefully we'll get to a point where it doesn't have to be that way, where, you know... Uh, where different platforms will catch up with the other. So, fingers crossed, eh? Yeah, and I, and I can say with absolute certainty, I have spoke to multiple people at Frontier, there have been multiple quotes on multiple websites, I can say for absolutely 100% positively that the console version, the Xbox One version of Elite Dangerous, has had a net positive effect on the game because there are multiple performance optimizations and improvements that they have found by working on that platform that they are bringing back in for PC and Mac. So the the common misconception by people that it, it, it is a bad thing um, is not necessarily true. There are circumstances where it is correct, I will, I will give that, that is absolutely the case, uh, but it is not always the case. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it, it's easy to get caught up in the, in the, the hype and the speculation. You, you read something online and people claim that this is the case and it's, you know, it, it's hard to find the facts. There is so much misinformation and FUD and, you know, people sometimes just seem to want to uh, spread bad rumours rather than actually giving you qualified information. It's just so much easier to make up rubbish. <laughs> oh, I d Don't take away my ability to make up rubbish, I'll have nothing left. <laughs> Oh, so that's what the show started off with on, on this stream was just rumour and speculation. <laughs> oh, good. And back to the roots. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that's a good point. Um, yes, look at Batman, Montux, you're saying there. Um, yeah, Batman, that is, like, like I was saying, that is a case which stands out as being on one side or the other. Now, in that case... Um, they outsourced, they, they, the Rocksteady made the console versions, they know what they're doing with that platform, they outsourced the PC version, and it, it was terrible. The port that they did for it was absolutely awful, so now they had to, to suspend sales and they brought it back in-house and they're going to be working on the conversion. That's a case where a bad situation has happened. There are plenty of other cases where good things have happened. Um, uh, Bebeck is telling me to go buy the Imperial Hammer. Yes, I, I have not had chance to go back to the uh, headquarters of my my power and actually buy the new power specific modules yet. So I will try and get that. Um, oh, that's a good point there, Karen. We, we've missed the trick there. Will there be Lavy and Brandy at Lavecon? <laughs> I don't know. I will totally ask. I will put it on the top of my list of things to ask the venue. Can we have Lavian Brandy? <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Mm, maybe we, we can get some uh, some bottles labelled up with that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, uh, did I miss any points that were going past it? Well, so I, was, I was sorry, I was going on my... <laughs> standing on my soapbox <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in it. Uh, whizzed past you. Yeah. Vonatar, yeah, it wasn't referring to ED specific. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think we can kind of ag agree on that point there that, uh, you know, some cases it is bad, but in other cases it can be an absolute positive thing. Look, I mean, look specifically at uh, the Unreal Engine, which has come out on practically every platform. And in the process of coming out on every platform, the engine has just gone from strength to strength. A lot of games are based on that engine. So, the fact that we have multiple consoles and multiple things means that we've we've got this better engine over years and generations of of, of hardware, and it you know it's not always a bad thing. It sometimes it works really well. Um, somebody's asked, never mind Brandy. Will there be aircon? Yes, it is a fabulous <laughs> hotel. It has all all oh, mod cons. Oh, aircon, oh, totally. It's amazing. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, particularly this uh, this time of year, it's it's pretty yeah. warm pretty warm i must admit yeah, it, it is absolutely. getting hot here right now it's very very warm <laughs> 
Uh, so, yeah, no, you won't. So you won't have a stroke whilst wearing the DK two. No, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not allowed. Uh, it's far too much paperwork. If you have a stroke while on the DK two, we shall make sure it's nice and cool. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, all, all the various suggestions of um, of coffee and Lavian orange juice and what have you. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, damn, damn! I have just been disconnected. Oh, let's try and go back in. Looks like uh, maybe they're doing server changes. What is the time? That's really bad timing. Let's try. Let's yeah, try and get back Landis in. Just said I, I keep getting disconnected from the server or so. Uh, yeah, no, a bunch of people kicked out. <laughs> secret sneaky updates. They're obviously working on something they can't tell us. This oh. this this happens. I've seen this happen before. And Clearly, they're, they're getting ready for Lavecon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's, there's stuff going on. I'll make I'll make another attempt to get to where I was going. Let's try that again. Let's try this again. Yeah. Disconnected for the Lord Ambassador. Yeah. See, I'm this this you know. Going back to my <laughs> earlier point, I'm just like everyone else. I don't get special treatment. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Oh, there you go. We will try it one more time, but it is coming up to uh, to the end of the stream now. I think we've covered everything in now. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pasting <laughs> in that link for James. Please do support him. Check out the stream tomorrow. Click the link. Click the link, please. Uh, you know, even if it's just a pound, if everyone here puts yeah, a pound, definitely. he would be like at least halfway towards his goal. So please do that. Um, and please do try and tune in. I'm gonna be there as much as I can uh, tomorrow to help him out. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be good fun. It's going to be great. Definitely, no, totally worth it. And of course, the obligatory plug is it's totally live gone next week. Lavecon. You should all come. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Just in case we haven't mentioned it enough. <laughs> Everybody drink. We said it. Absolutely. Oh dear, good fun, good fun. Oh, I'm getting interdicted again. That's just rude. That's just rude. Always happen. <clears throat> Oh, oh, there we go, ship scan. It's a Diamondback Scout. Uh, it's not really worth the trouble. <laughs> yes, I must get back and help. So yes, if anyone in there is uh, an Arissa Deval supporter, then uh, yeah, we're we're going to be 139 CC short at the end of this cycle. So please do try and step in. Even if you're not supporting Arissa, you're not doing power play. Please just just step in. Help get a couple of hundred more CC. It won't it won't take long. Please. Do it for Crash. <laughs> you know you want to. Why not? <laughs> uh, brilliant. Oh, run away. Come on. Brave Sir Robin. Faster. Full power to engines. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Right. <laughs> so I've got to try and get back to this station, but uh, I think we're, we're running up close to the end of time, so I think we're going to have to try and wrap up. And uh, everyone's just going to have to stay tuned for the next stream to see if Crash makes it to the station in time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think at this point, I think uh, it's, it, we better try and wrap up with this. So, Karen, I must say, absolute huge, huge thank you for coming on tonight. It's really, really great. No, it, it's been lots of fun. Thank you for inviting me. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, no, it's, it's brilliant. I do appreciate it. I mean, I know you're very, very busy and everything that's coming up. So, and I can't wait to see you next week. It's going to be great. Oh, it's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, no, a few people saying we'll see you there. Brilliant. Looking yes. forward to it. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait to meet all you commanders out there. Yes, and thank you very much to uh, all you guys who have tuned in tonight, all the guys and gals, I should say, everyone who's joined in. It's it's really, really good to see you on there. I really do appreciate your support and everything. And I can't wait to uh, see you next week if you're coming to LaveCon. If you're not coming to LaveCon, uh, please do try and tune into the streams. And uh, you, you will see on the uh, the Lave Radio uh, Twitch channel. So, But there we go. Right, so I think we're wrapped up. I'm, I'm just going to taunt everyone I'm just gonna sit <laughs> right by the station will crash make it tune in Who live knows? at Leavecon to find <laughs> out <laughs> oh brilliant <laughs> oh it's been fab lovely to see you guys in chat take care bye right, see <laughs> so thank you very much for everyone and uh, until next week commanders see you in the void yeah.